Hello and welcome to There Be Dragons, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons podcast. I'm your Dungeon Master, Matthew. We'll go around the room and introduce each of the players and the characters they play. I'm Josh, and I'm going to be playing Scan Felspar, um, a Northern Wastes half-elf ranger um, with a penchant for piracy and uh, a little dragon called Krosh as his little friend. Um, He's a beast master. So, of course, he has a little dragon. And he likes harpoons and harpooning people and harpoon-related activities. Hi, I'm Karen, and I'm playing Commander Ryland Westfall, who's a silver dragonborn from the Erhart Kingdom. And uh, she's a bit of a disgraced ex-military dragonborn. Uh, typical story, slept with the wrong woman, got caught, got kicked out. So she's uh, been, you know wandering around, being a mercenary for a while. But she, she's going to take her revenge. Yeah, cool. I'm Tom. I'm playing a halfling bard by the name of Nezor Valgulis. Uh, hopefully he's going to have a lot of fun and play a bit of guitar. Hi, I'm Angela, and I'm playing Abella de Rosier, the elf. She is a bit of a light-fingered lady on the run from her hometown family and the general circumstances of the city she left. Hey, yeah, I'm Tristan. Um, I've been playing D&D since 3.5, so 10 years. Um, at I'm, least. At, at least, yeah. I'm playing Clarence Longbottom, a dwarven cleric. He's been adventuring for 200-odd years, uh, seen it all done it all and yeah so he's out looking for more work um and hopefully the party he finds isn't going to die like a bunch of idiots like everyone else i was going to ask him a question on that actually at what point does it start after 200 years do you start to think maybe it's actually your fault not everyone else's <laughs> Welcome to the Yuriant, the cradle of civilization. Here the great powers have long vied for supremacy over their rivals. To the north lies the lands of the unholy empire. Frozen tundra, great peaks, and ancient rotting castles dot the landscape, as vampiric and tiefling clans play deadly games of power politics far above the concerns of their human serfs. But even they cannot tame the wild north entirely, with the fracturous illic people clinging to the perennially frozen coasts like fleas on a dog. To the south lies the human kingdom of Erhart, situated on a large island that bulwarks the inland sea. A powerhouse nation that punches well above its weight is in near constant conflict with its closest neighbour and rival, the elven Bashanur Republic. With the advent and proliferation of gunpowder in this age, these conflicts have become increasingly more bloody, and its terrestrial interests on the southern continent larger and larger. To the east lies the Ephir, a series of ranges so colossal that they extend thousands of miles, circling the inland sea to the northern continent. Here, the free cities of the peaks and the dwarves of the Mornkarike dwell. To the west, the southernmost power, the lands of the Valenic, a pseudo-religious halfling hegemony, holders of a strange faith and a quiet and creeping imperial design. Our story, however, begins in none of these places. We open on the storm-wracked coast of an island in the middle of the Western Oceans, the port city of Ard Fulun once a cruel prison colony, but now a prosperous trading hub. Ardfalun is ruled by a council of five wizards, the highest of which is known as the Ard. They've managed to keep imperialistic interests of the other major powers in the world out of Ardfalun. Scan, you find yourself in the docks of Ardfalun following a rumour you'd heard from a fisherman friend of yours. Apparently, your sister had been sighted wandering the docks some time ago. Uh, Nezel, ever the bard, you found yourself short of coin and in need of a gig or an opportunity, uh, possibly, to refill your coffers. Uh, Ryland, you've come to Ardfalun in search of mercenary work. There's a number of mercenary companies that are always hiring out of Ardfalun. Clarence, you left the family shop for the day. You've bid your mother and father goodbye and you've toddled off to the pub, hopefully finding someone who needs an adventurer. Abella, you've fled your family's plan for an arranged marriage and caught the first ship to the furthest place you think they would care to look. 
However, the passage was quite tumultuous and it's come to your attention that even though you're from a naval family, you get incredibly seasick incredibly easily. And so the journey wasn't as pleasant as you'd hoped. In turn, each of you are approached and given a small slip of parchment by a mysterious cloaked messenger, which has a small waxen seal on it and the following message. I hear you are in need of work. Well, if work's what you need, come to the sunken cask this evening and ask for the Roquet Red, a friend. Uh, you discover that the sunken cask is actually found at the bottom of a staircase coming off of a side alley. It um, clearly was a converted basement of some kind uh, with a low roof, about five and a half feet tall, which is a little bit painful for some of you who are taller than that. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it's a rather homely tavern. There are a few patrons. To your left is a tiefling drinking from a tankard. Over near the fire, there is a small group of uh, dock workers. The only thing that seems to be amiss is that there is a half-orc bartender dressed very smartly in a vest and apron, washing a glass. I would stand back and let the big people go in first. <laughs> and I would walk up to the, uh, the bar and order a rum. Half-orc looks up at you. What kind of rum? What kind have you got, Dark? He looks up at a shelf above the bar and goes, We've got Dark and not-so-dark rum. Oh, well, I like the sound of the not-so-dark. <laughs> not-so-dark rum coming up. He goes and uh, starts pouring a, uh, a small tot of rum for you. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not so dark. What do I owe you? Two shillings. Pays a man two shillings. Anything else for your companions? I don't know. Anything else for my companions? Flag in a veil for me, please. Hello. A flag in a veil for this man? I uh, stand out from the back of the crowd. A small flag in a veil, please. A small but equally fine flag in a veil for this one? All right. So he's paying for them. I'll get this one if you guys get the next one. The York chuckles and says, I like the sound of that. And he kind of turns his turns around and he's, um, there's sort of like three large kegs built into the wall with taps. It actually looks like, it's, it's, it's very orcish in its sort of design. It's kind of like this really simple looking clay jug, I guess, and he starts filling it. Oh, no, 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 one of those for me. He sort of just taps it off and uh, puts it in and goes, That will be seven shillings, thanks. Anything else? Something for the ladies, perhaps? I'm okay. Possibly, you don't uh, look okay. A ginger ale. <laughs> a ginger ale sounds lovely. A ginger ale and a rocket red for the lady. Rocket red, thank you. And a rocket red. Mm. Okay, so the, at the mention of the rocket red, he um, the half orc's eyes dart up at you. Is that for all of you then? I just think we need one glass, but yeah, I believe we're all interested in both yes. the colour and the texture. Yes. Mm. Oh, and a bowl of water, please. You feed your dragon water. Well, he gets rather explosive if I give him the dark rum. I think he'd enjoy that sort of stimulation. He probably would, but not inside a wooden building. Uh, the bartender walks out from behind the bar, extending almost to full height under the roof, and gestures you to follow him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please follow me. I'll bring you your drinks in just a moment. Okay. Much obliged. So he takes you to the side corridor and says casually over his shoulder, your benefactor has put aside a private room for you, just in here. He sort of rounds a corner and immediately the roof starts going up to like an actual people-sized roof. Oh, my I neck. I resent that comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, this is better. Um, oh, this is, this is much better. And uh, you'll notice okay. that there's three doors sort of on the hallway and one, one which probably fronts onto like the next sort of depression over, knocks on the door. Enter. Just in here, thanks. The door opens and you're immediately hit by the warmth of the room provided by a small crackling fire in the corner. And then you're hit by the rich smell of aromatic meats that have all been prepared for you. There's a tray of chicken wings, a platter of uh, glazed ham, and this is all arrayed about on a really lovely uh, handmade oak table with five empty chairs waiting for you. And in the sixth, a half-elf. 
So this half-elf doesn't actually look like your standard half-elf. Uh, he has pronounced buck teeth and his ears seem to be drooping a little bit lower than what you'd normally expect. He's also dressed in a worn red leather overcoat and looks incredibly tired. Huh. I see you've all got my message. Excellent, excellent. Please come in, sit down, avail yourself of the food. Uh, that will be all, thank you, Tancred. So yes, uh, you're, you're sort of ushered into this room and Tancred, which is the name of the uh, half orcs you've probably gathered, um, closes the door behind you. Ah, well, where are my manners? I should perhaps introduce myself. Uh, I'm Dupree Dupont of House Dupont, a relatively new addition to the Erhart Kingdom, I'm sure you know. Might I say, Miss Westfall, you look ravishing tonight. Miss? It's charming. Thank you. Well, since your unfortunate fall from grace, Miss Westfall, I can't exactly call you a lady anymore. But I do remember those of us who held a peerage, mm. and I do like to use their correct honorific. Ah, but where are my manners? Uh, please, take a seat. Let me pour you a drink. And he uncorks a small bottle that he's got nearby and starts to pour everyone a glass of red wine. Excuse me, gentlemen, sir. May I inquire as to the... This is all lovely and all. Thank you very much for it. Um, but uh, what is the point? Oh, well, I, I'd hoped we'd have fed and watered ourselves a little bit before we'd got down to business, but... Uh, Half about a little bit more? Well, if it's uh, matters of money you'd rather speak of, I can offer each of you 100 ducats for services rendered. Out of curiosity, do you have that amount on you now? <laughs> no, uh, it is held in trust. Though I do see why my agents did recommend you to me. Let us just say that the DuPont name is built upon intelligence, uh, both cerebral and information gathering. Thank you for clarifying. Ah, but today's meeting is somewhat more of a personal request. The matter at hand is somewhat delicate, and I simply cannot have anyone directly working for me be involved. So I have, of course, noted your skills and feel that, in return for monetary compensation, you could be of some assistance. Ah, but what kind of host am I? There's this wonderful spread in front of you, and uh, we're talking about business. Please. Avail yourself of the food. Yes, the rum. Oh, Nezo already is. Like, he's never sure when his next meal's going to come from. So he's filled himself up and then filled his jacket of tiny little pockets up with chicken wings and ham already. Um, there's a... Tancred stands there holding his tray as he awkwardly manoeuvres his way through the door. Uh, it's tarnished silver and has a variety of different drinks, which he very carefully places down in front of the corresponding owners. Ah, thank you, Tancred. Uh, please, no further disturbances until later. As you wish, sir. So, while you've all started eating, he starts to talk a little bit more about what he's after. Uh, so, Dupree looks at each of you and goes, So, as I was saying earlier, this is something of a, hmm, delicate operation. I require assistance in recovering a document that was taken from me. Tell me, do any of you know of Arch Magister Mano? Not intimately, no. Um, Not at all. Would anyone like to see if they do actually know anything about this fellow? I will see if I know. Cool. Uh, tell me if you roll over 15. Oh! I rolled a two. I rolled a 20. Uh, so Arch Magister Mano is an incredibly powerful wizard and diplomat. He is the Ard's second and one of the five wizards that runs Ard Falon. Forgive me for asking, um, but v exactly what kind of document? No, oh, it's a matter of inheritance. Would you care like to elaborate yours on that? Or? So would he be, would, would this Arch Magister be able to claim that is well no not really you see here's the rub it is uh only valid with the document but only the entitled people may claim it so what benefit does it have for him oh it's purely academic he's a bibliophile he only does what he does to further expand his library may i, um, may I roll to see whether or not i believe him sure like was well, or whether or not um he's being truthful um, okay, so that's an insight check. Uh -huh. May I roll this? Is yeah, sure. Twenty. Yeah. Um, so yes, it's a d twenty, and um, you add your insight. Uh, one six. Okay. Um, no, no he's so just seems completely nervous. Uh, like that's all you can get from him. Right. Sure. I rolled a twenty-four. 
24. Yes. Um, yeah, no, he's not telling you everything. Absolutely not. Um, yeah. You've had enough of these sorts of dealings to know when someone is giving you not necessarily not the whole story, basically. Um, what? What? How are you wanting us to do this? Ah, I'm so glad you asked. I'd like you to take this box, and he reaches down and lifts something up from underneath the table and plops it down, and uh, replace it with the one that's currently sitting in Manu's tower. And you'll actually notice that on the on the top of the box is sort of an ornate iron circle with what looks like a dragon's head inside it. It looks like someone took the end of a brand and kind of snapped it off, if you will. Where would we find this document? Well, actually, this is quite interesting. It would seem that there is a sea cavern on the western side of the island that connects directly to his residence. Some kind of uh, surreptitious entrance, it would seem. So my plan is for you to enter through this cavern and navigate your way through his tower, find his office or wherever he's keeping this document, replace the box, and then abscond with the original. Normally, if one is in search of um, financial reimbursement for on behalf of another party, one is entitled to a percentage. I would feel inclined to negotiate further with you on your position. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any further funds to hand, and the matter of the inheritance is somewhat complicated, but allow me to sweeten the pot for you, shall we say. Uh, I am in a position to offer you all a uh, ship's passage uh, free of charge. How does that suit? I feel it is my civic duty to assist this poor gentleman. Bleeding hearts. I'm, look, I'm interested. This is... This is uh, Sounds interesting. Um, so... Yes. I have to say, in what way does such a straightforward mission require five different individuals? Yeah, yeah. I could probably do this by myself, to be honest. Like, I'm sure you're great, but... Well, I'll be quite honest with you. You're not the first adventurers I've sent on this mission. I previously sent in a two-man team, a halfling and a gnome. But they've not returned, so I assume that this place is highly secure and therefore requires... Any gestures to all of you? A more varied skill set. I can uh, perform when needed. So we are agreed then. Excellent. Well, I shall give you a few minutes I'll to... I'll happily take your hundred, but you need to give us the full story. And I know you're holding out. I'm actually, I'm going to agree with this this, this fine dwarven gentleman here. I, I'm very interested in your offer. It takes a hundred, but I, I want to know is this whole story is that he seems certain you that may, you have. You may be telling us the truth, but you're holding out. And further to that, if the last team died... Well, I don't know that they've died. They just simply haven't returned. Yes. Full disclosure. If I don't recover this document and soon, I stand to lose quite a lot. Quite a lot. In fact, far too much. Including social standing, among other things. How much do you stand to gain? Well, I suppose from your perspective, you could consider it immeasurable wealth. Immeasurable. I love the word immeasurable. Mm. Well, you cannot you know be measured. I'm measure. sure. I'm pretty sure I we can measure, measure most things. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I mean, it is an inheritance. I imagine the, the majority of it would be uh, sentimental. Hmm. Ah. Uh, well, as I said, I'm happy to work. You know nothing more about the uh, defenses and so forth mm -hmm. inside, so. Um, I imagine they would be magical. magical. Of intelligence. Uh, well, I mean, uh, as you all probably know, um, Arch Magister Marno is a uh, illusionary wizard. Um, he most likely has a number of fiendish traps and pitfalls hidden in the in the guise of a, uh, a solid floor, for instance. Um, so simply just watch your step, I suppose. Um, other than that, um, I really can't say. I mean, not my, my agents have not been able to penetrate quite so far. Yeah, all right. Uh, Your family deals in information, yes. I am in the search of a certain person. Mm -hmm. Information on her whereabouts, mm -hmm. accompanied to the money, would be very appreciated. Oh, you're speaking of your sister, Bodle, I believe. Well, I may have some information regarding her whereabouts. But then if we complete this mission successfully, I would like to have it. Oh, absolutely. Let's shake on it, shall we? And he extends a hand out to you. And I shake his hand. Ah, good man. Good man. If information is a bargain you are willing to strike... Well, Miss Westfall, I can certainly, on the assumption, of course, that you succeed, 
uh, arrange for an interaction with one of the parties that was involved. Very well. Uh, as for the rest of you, feel free to take as much of the feast with you as you want. Fill your boots, as it were. Oh, I have. It's all in my vest. <laughs> you got like a jungle while you had those tiny pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, ha- he does seem to have gained some girth in the last half now. Yeah. The life of a bard is not very full of food. One assumes. That explains the pockets, like, scarily so. Like, every time you go to, like, a venue, you just sort of, like, chicken wing, chicken wing, chicken wing. <laughs> he smells very odd. <laughs> Imagine cleaning that jacket. is very difficult. The vest is mostly grease. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're leaking. They're lined with Ziploc bags. <laughs> 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 He rustles as he walks. <laughs> uh, Dupree gets up and goes to leave, but stops suddenly and goes, Ah, almost forgot. Tancred here will see you to the ship that will take you to the west side of the island once you've finished your meal, and uh, once you've successfully completed the uh, operation, return here tomorrow morning. I will wait for you with great anticipation. Good day, good day. He's so optimistic, it's refreshing. It's really nice to be believed in, isn't it? Mm. Very I wonder if I'll meet those other guys. <laughs> that would be interesting. He's left the room. Mm-hmm. I'm going to turn to you because clearly you know him. Mm. Um, like, so can we really trust this guy? I don't know if trust is the right word. Can we trust the name? Well, the name if what, what he says got. is true, he stands to lose a great deal of power and position. But- by our action, he could gain a huge amount of power. Retrieving a package is one thing, dear dwarf. Handing it over is another. Tancred's just at the door looking at you all. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Stop staring. Sorry, miss. Could but I thank have you for the drink. Slightly dark rum, please. There's yes, yes, another round of what we had before. Oh, my nice, shout. Yeah. Uh, he looks a little nervous and says. Uh, I think any position on what ultimately to do should be based on the contents of the document, because I don't know if any of you were planning to read it. Answer the beer, good sir. Oh, yes, I was planning to read it very much, because... You can read? read? We could just read. I mean... I just love the image of this It's a useful skill. (laughs) It's just (laughs) a giant half-blown bloke in the doorway going, so you were going to come with me? (laughs) Like he, he, the conversation seemed over. <laughs> now you, now you're like, actually, no, let's have another drink. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it, we're in a rush. <laughs> just, just do me a favour and don't get drunk. I Some don't do those sorts of favours. Sorry. Some of my best yeah. work is done slightly full of rum. <laughs> some of some anymore. of Grosh's best work is done very full of rum. <laughs> oh. I guess we should base our ultimate decision on the contents of the document. Yes, I don't fully believe him that we can't stand to benefit from at least reading it. We only have his word that we don't get anything from it. My concern is what he would spend that fortune on. And if my experience with nobles, no offence, is anything to go by, it's never good for people like us. In mine experience, I don't know it would make any difference. Is the orc still there? (laughs) He's sort of there, but now he's got like a small he's tray. He's got the tray of, like, of like, yeah. Dankeshern, my good man. Oh, is there a ginger beer? Uh, I'll, I'll just... I'll just I'll come back. And I'll give him some yeah, of my beer. beer. <laughs> Tancred, how long have you been serving this elf? Well, he paid for the rest of the room, miss. That's it? Did how he much? pay up front? In cash? He paid me a silver mark. Mm. He, seem, he seems really uncomfortable with the uh, questions about his business, so he goes... Mm. Fair enough. I'm like, just clear up. And yeah, he starts, like, putting things onto the tray. And, like, I'll yes. give him a hand. <laughs> I delicately spear our deer haunch with one claw. Good spread. Compliments to the chef. Oh, thank you. My wife will appreciate it. Why is it your wife? Deirdre! <laughs> <laughs> the customers like you cooking. Oh, good! <laughs> Deirdre, it's an uncommon name for an orc. Uh, he seems a little bashful as he corrects you. She's not an orc, miss. What? What are you married to? Be careful to? what you're saying. Uh, he, he squirms a bit. If you must know, she's a halfling. Did, oh, no, I don't no, even no, want to. I, this I, is, I, this I is can't even deal with the physics of that. No, Can I'm we, genuinely she's curious. She's probably quite a lucky a step, woman. I think involved? Shaquille Man is a bit insulted. Do you have any, like, <laughs> little half? Can we, can we please... Kindly simplify things. What would that even look like? 
Uh, I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable with your line of questioning, uh, sirs and ladies. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable having been so long on dry land. Can we get back in the boat? <laughs> oh, God, is that necessary? There are boats involved, my dear. Do you have a problem with boats? Not at all. Excellent. Then let's, let's go to the boat. Go. If you like, I'll take the box. So Tancred, with his armful of plates and dishes, uh, ushers you out of the room puts the plate on the ground and then takes you out the back of the tavern into a small side street and leads you down towards the dock where you're met by a hooded figure standing atop a rowboat. Well, I best be getting back to Deirdre. Good luck with whatever it is you're up to. Thank you, Tancred. Give her our best. Tip Give her your best. Shilling. So, uh, yeah, Tancred takes the coin and ambles off back towards the pub. Um, so, yes, the figure on the boat's gesturing for you to come forward. And I assume you all do. So this gentleman is dressed in sort of seafaring gear, but he does have a cloak on, and uh, yeah. it's all very cloak and dagger. Mm -hmm. Does he have a dagger on? Yes, he does oh, okay. actually have a medal of daggers. Can we see daggers. the dagger? This guy probably fancies himself as a bit of a... Sure. Does he, it's like he's trying to look... Yeah, he's trying to look tough to and look menacing. Tough and me. All right, you lot the ones that Mr. Dupree sent. Doesn't matter. Get in the boat and we'll head around the west side of the island. Ah, low tide. This is good, yeah. So it doesn't take you very long to realise that the helmsman of this boat has zero interest in speaking to you. And he manages to get you around to the west side of the island rather quickly, um, navigating his way around some reefs, some rocks, and you almost miss the sea cave um, hidden behind an, a, an outcropping of white stone. And he directs you inside. Um, and as he brings you in, you actually realise that this place is quite spacious. Uh, there's a very clear, delineated path leading in. Uh, and very helpfully, there is a chain that's actually been bolted to the one side of this cave. And you follow it in and uh, it actually leads to a small ledge that allows you to step off quite easily. Uh, the whole area has stalactites and stalagmites coming out of the water and further into the cave. Um, you all disembark and uh, the gentleman sort of just says, All right, get off my boat. I'll be here until dawn. Okay, so you all traipse out of the boat and head into the cave. I, as we travel through, are going to look out for traps. Oh, good. Okay, well, would you like to roll your dice, please? I would. That is a nine plus five is 14. Should I possibly look out for a trap as well? Please. Yeah, all right, I might. Because a 14 again? probably... Yeah, so the two pathfinders uh, are... Like, nine. That's not great. Plus your perception? No. Yeah, no, that is nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, no. Uh, I don't see shit. <laughs> luckily for you, it appears that this is a naturally formed cave from the sea. Uh, so you all get out of the boat and traipse into the cave, being very careful to look for traps, but finding none. Um... So just to give you an idea of where you're traveling, the cave leads back directly towards Ardfalon, the town. And the island is not that big. So about 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes into your journey, you see that the wall actually starts to take on more of a man-made appearance. Uh, the smoothed stone that the seawater has probably carved away over millennia turns into a hewn stone brick. Uh, and ahead of you, you see a staircase uh, with a water line about halfway up. Oh. When is, when is, when is high tide? In about six hours, six I hours. would imagine. We, we need to hurry. Yes. Let's yes. talk about I'm going to check as we go up the stairs again for traps because sure. this is an aura man made. Again, that, thing. that was my thinking. Uh, 13 plus 5, so 18. So 18 is fairly good. Uh, this is uh, 17 as well. No, so. you're fine. There's nothing here. Okay. That's, cool. it, looks, it actually looks, any, if anything, it looks like this is kind of like where they would probably tie a boat off when mm, it was high tide, like, yeah, yeah. high tide or something. And I'm they would probably. They would probably wait for it to lessen and then ride it out through the right. cave. Let's see. Okay, it's, carry on. It's so not... So we're walking. Yeah. Are there any cobbles? Um, cobalts. That's what? No. No, there doesn't appear to be anything. It's actually kind of... The only thing you've been hearing has sort of been the drip, drip, drip of water coming down a stalactite or a stalagmite. Plus, if we've hit the stairs, is there any light? Yeah. Um, there be there, torches? There aren't any torches. However, there are definitely torch brackets. But they just don't appear to be occupied by the said torches. Hmm, so they have been. Which okay. is good, though, well, because if they had torches, it means that it would be frequently used, which we if don't we continue want. Up. That's true, that is true. Why do we yeah. see the feather up we go? Um, the room above you actually appears to have some kind of light source coming from fairly 
surprisingly far away. It, but the area you're immediately in is not illuminated. Um, it's only been your torch that you torches that you've been carrying that yeah, actually yeah. illuminated the path. Um, the further you climb, um, it actually appears that this place is actually quite well maintained. There appear, there are rudimentary sort of arch. How worn is the floor? The floor is actually pretty worn. Uh, the, the it appears like the water, especially, has sort of left like a sort it's of a, a mossy. Um, yes, it's a mossy kind of texture. But there isn't a worn down path through the moss. No, not really. It doesn't look like this has been used in quite a while. It's um, quite an impressive find. It was probably predated. The um, tower. Yeah, it was probably part of like a smuggler's cavern first um, and then sort of appropriated back. But um, as you reach the top of the landing, you actually notice that the area has actually been cleared out and there are sort of like these artificial arches sort of put in to kind of brace the roof. And at the far end, there is this rather grand looking oaken door. It's sort of a large, thin, sort of uh, tapered end. Um, so above it is sort of a, uh, it looks like a sort of um, rather ornate looking centerpiece. It's al it almost looks like a, uh, like a lion's mouth or something, and mm. it appears to have something inside it like uh, that's actually emanating this this colour. Can I ask about the flora and fauna of this world? Sure. What, what are you we like talking about? Like what the 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 I don't know which is which. Is it fauna or is the animals? No, it's fauna, fauna plants, yeah. fauna animals. Yes, thank you. So, uh, so the, the fauna particularly. So we do, uh, lions, I think. Yes, but um, so we're pretty much, much talking about the, the whole pantheon of what we've got in this world is what they have in that world. Yeah, so, you yeah, would know what it is. I've heard of it. Yeah, basically, it's like the same way that the British Isles adopted the the lion as sort yeah. of their symbol. It's yeah. like we uh, found one one time when we were on crusade in Jerusalem, and it was great. So we brought it home and killed it. How far away are we from the lion head? Uh, you're about fifty meters. Cool. Let's go up and have a look. Is what's there, uh, well, can we just check? Is there anything? Anything special about this line? Okay, the the one thing the line. one thing I hadn't <laughs> mentioned yet, and I really needed to mention first after I described this doorway, was that there appears to be a statue on the floor that appears to be crawling towards the door. Oh. It's got a hand outstretched, and it does uh, it look like an, a halfling or a gnome? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Jolly it, good. I'm going to roll my perception interestingly, now. Interestingly, <laughs> it appears also to be wearing clothes. Oh, that's good. No, I don't no, want wait, a naked a no. It just means that it's turned the flesh... It, so it turns yeah, flesh yeah. to stone. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm assuming it's one of the guys that was sent in before us. Yeah. Oh, yes, most probably. That's horrifying. Yeah. So that's why, hence the rolling. Yeah. 18 plus 5, 23. What was the Tell role for? What, uh, to, to find a trap. <laughs> um, <laughs> this whole room screams trap. It's probably got something to do with the lion head. Um, okay, thank you. So, what's yeah. your arcana skill? Oh, forgive me. None. Fuck, you're the worst. <laughs> the worst part ever. I like your music. <laughs> oh, music. Have you played us music yet? Arcana. Can you I only have a two. Time. You can do an untrained arcana check. Like, I'm plus two arcana. Me too. Who's you've got zero? I got nothing. I got plus one. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we looking for? Can I can I suggest that perhaps we do a perception or a search check first? Well, I did just do a perception check. You did. You asked me about traps. Oh, okay. Sorry. Can I'm I being... do a different perception check? Or... Yeah. Do a... Okay. Sorry. I didn't realize it was a perception check. Let me... I uh, only and... got a nine. Okay. So you see the statue on the floor. It's wearing clothes. Its hand is outstretched. At the door, you actually notice that the door is slightly ajar, and there appears to be a tower shield um, against the door, mm. uh, which is about three foot tall. Or a gnome's oh, tower what? shield. Yeah, basically. Oh, okay. Something that would easily fit there. It would be the entire height of the person holding yep. it. Yeah. I do have one of those. Um, I, I believe you. And you rolled a what, 23? <laughs> I did. Yeah. Uh, the the statue on the floor looks like it's in the stance of someone who's been pushed. Um, and on the floor, and you didn't realise that initially, but there is a it's low light, it's and quite there's, dusty. There's... There is a la, like a, a sort of circular arrangement on the ground into kind of different mm. sections. So it kind of is, it's almost like someone's kind of gone through and done pavement on there. Beyond that, there's no real discerning markings or anything. Wait, wait, guys, don't step any further because I'm I'm seeing a lot of things on the floor and know. this this guy wearing clothes, but he's clearly a statue, but he's not a statue because he's wearing clothes, and how would they do that? So would you like me to see if I can find out what sort of magic trap? Uh, what's your arcana? you plus two, mine. I only got a ten. All right, let's see I, if I can work out what it is. I want to see whether there's some sort of magic going on here. So, like, um... Wisdom to it. Uh, okay. So whether it's sort of if it's alive or whether it's just magical. Okay. 
Um, so what was it? You it's only off? a ten. Okay. Uh, no. Um, look, it <coughs> seems like this thing is probably just hit, ticked off by proximity, just because of the way the guy's fallen forward. It looks like he's kind of been pushed. Got blown out. And no, no, pushed forward. Who's in the front of our group? I think also is an important point. Well, I'm he was in the with. Back. He was. <laughs> wait. So this is one of the two. There yes. was a halfling and a gnome, which is not the team I would send for this. Sure. But um, a halfling and a gnome. Which of the two is this? Is this, this is a the gnome? gnome? This is a gnome. Okay. So it seems the halfling's pushed his gone friend forwards. into it and gone further I was to super trigger the trap. And with left. the halfling at the back of our group. So I was going to say, who who's standing <laughs> in the front of this group? <laughs> <laughs> Probably me because oh, I'm pretty keen. Roll to push. <laughs> Well, actually, I seem to think you and I would Rude. be at the front. Oh, we yes, have the absolutely. pathfinders. Mm. Yes, absolutely. I'm not. I well, can I, yeah, can I roll Arcana to please, see if I can find out what do. sort of spells? So uh, at this point, sure. we're sort of forming a semicircle, I feel. <laughs> yeah, you're all kind of on even like, footing. Okay, so yes, we're look. looking at this, this whole around. circle in the floor. All right, let's see if I can work yeah, out what see, this okay, is. Hold up. It is an eight. A ten. 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 So what I Um... By what you could probably guess, it looks like this is some kind of um, trigger that basically some kind of magical effect occurs and it petrifies anyone who's caught in it, but it's only the organic tissue. Could I try something? Sure. I want to take my hammer Mm -hmm. and try and damage one of the runes that's carved into the There's no runes, it's actually blank, but you can absolutely smash a hammer down on the... um, the Segment. So we can see there's a death, uh, like a definite yeah, line. Yeah, there are groups. I, I want to try and uh, you know, break, break that. Before you do hammer. that, you said it It only triggers on flesh. No, no, the effect only appears to affect flesh. Cool. All this food that I stuffed in my pockets before, can I throw that? Forward and see if yeah, it absolutely. triggers. Oh, do it. I like that. Plan. Just, just throw one. I just, I, I throw yeah, a single. Throw all and then I move to the front of the party and throw a single chicken wing. Let's say, how, how far in front are these? Uh, look, you're probably standing on the edge, so like a five foot. Yeah, cool. I, just I throw it. Make sure your hand doesn't yes. travel across the line, as please. As <laughs> I, I toss it carefully. <laughs> Five feet in front of Okay, me. so uh, it arcs through the air and not even before it hits the ground, a blue light shoots from the, the lion's mouth and petrifies it before it hits the ground. Where on the lion's mouth? Uh, centre. There's like a, some kind so of... So it's like a giant hole it looks right like in the middle? It's like, it's like a... But is there something that emits it or it just appears out of thin Do air? Do a second and it's, one it's to see just if it's just a single charm. Shoots uh, like a blue beam Well, it wouldn't be it. a single charm because it's already happened once already. So it's but it's like a recharge. recharge. So I, I throw a second to see what happens. It does exactly the same thing. I'm not surprised. The, okay. There are now two petrified chicken wings on the floor. <laughs> okay. well, so and please. a gnome. And a gnome who <laughs> looks quite... Tasty and horrified. Uh, no, well, he, no, he looks extremely horrified about the situation. Oh, Do you have a small glass? Sorry, a small glass jar or something like something. I do. To it's got a sprite in it. Put a chicken wing in that um, and roll it in. Sure. What do you seek to find out? To see whether the beam will penetrate through non-organic material. I, I'm with you. I'm seeing where you're going with this. How do you propose to put any of us in a jar? Mm. I have a shield. <laughs> if I can put my shield between I see. The, the beam so and myself. So we need the shield to hit. Yeah, yeah. And then I can slide it back and we can all do that. Okay. Well, look, as long as you pick up my jar along the way, I'm happy to I, make this experiment. I would experiment. say roll the jar forward in the hopes that it hits something and rolls back. Oh, that. Roll it in a chicken wing. <laughs> and it'll bounce off the stone look, chicken I know, wing I know, and come I'm back. I'm not overly fussed, but I would like the jar back because yeah. I need it to keep my dead sprite. Yeah, so roll yeah, it yeah. and bounce okay. it off a chicken so wing. Okay, give me I, a, I chicken a chicken wing. wing. Thank yeah. you. And I'll put it in my jar. I'll take the sprite out. Here, hold the hold the sprite for okay. me. Thank okay. you. Don't crush it. It's quite dry. <clears throat> it's, it's very dry. I have not pickled it at all. <laughs> And those things are... What's that smell? Yeah, we have no idea how hot they it's, are. Uh, there is an unholy stick around <laughs> oh, that thing. Oh, dear God. Oh, God. Oh, but this is why I keep it in a jar. Shush, shush, shush. Stop it. Sick again. Oh, God. Go and be sick somewhere. <gasps> why did we bring her? <laughs> no, she just right, throws I'm, up I'm, I'm now rolling again very carefully. And I'm not actually aiming to hit a chicken wing or anything. I really don't care what happens to the glass jar. I'll have to borrow something from one of your many, many pockets. And throw in rolling and I'm... Yeah, so the thing rolls forward, rolls forward, rolls forward and comes to a stop in a groove. Am I the only one who has a shield? I have a shield. I do not. Oh. But 
So it's not coming from an emission point. There is no sort of... It is literally the mouth of the lion. There is a beam of light that comes out of it and hits whatever comes out. So it's not like the top of the mouth and no. there's a little pole and they come out. So I can't throw something at it and break the thing that... Is basically my question. Oh, we could you shoot an could arrow at it. try. I have a pistol. But you can't. There is, doesn't appear to be. No, there appears there to doesn't be, appear to be something to hit. Is my point? Is that, it shoots yeah, from it, the mouth of the lion. Yeah. yeah. However, it should be pointed out that there is actually light emanating around the room. It appears to be concentrated around the lion's mouth. But the lion's well, mouth. That's, that's valid information. But, that might have been useful before. But that's it what was I said, given but, straight away. Yeah. <laughs> but the light that the mouth itself is black, so you can't see sure, anything. Sure. In sure. Sure. We could shoot an arrow with a chicken wing attached to it into the mouth. What? To just determine the speed of the <laughs> organic material. <laughs> but because then, define organic material, because wood is organic. I think it's fleshy material. You think? Shall we try? Can I? I have. I've I, got a short bow. Do you have some arrows? Uh, just an arrow. Yeah. Stick I mean, an arrow in. 20 I'm, arrows. The wood. The wood in the arrow is what we're worried about. Because what's your shield made of? Steel, I'm wearing half plate. You're carrying a steel shield. I'm like, half plate, steel, <laughs> yeah. The yeah. so steel is freaking heavy. So it's like half plate, so upper part half plate, and then heavy This is a shield for a dwarf dress. as well, so the rest of us are crouching. I am yeah. five well, and a half feet. feet so well, okay, thing. you're fine. I'm five and I a half feet tall. Shield. Could so. we try to shoot a chicken wing into the lion's mouth, petrify, <laughs> <laughs> and then it would maybe block the... Oh, I have to no, think about that. to the ground. Oh, duh. I can just walk up and put my shield in front of its mouth. Yeah, that's what and I was then everyone else can it, is, it is literally like nine foot in the air. Oh. Mm. So something would have to... So I'd have to go. Oh, you're, you're not nine you're foot tall. tall. I'm going to climb. Crush. I should get up Wake there. Up. But oh, also I'd be turned into stone. He's not happy that you put him. <laughs> nor is he going to be able I'm to sorry, carry Raj, my go shield. Back to sleep. How heavy is my shield? <laughs> How heavy? Yes. Uh, as not heavy as the Dungeons and Dragons players. Is it more than ten pounds? I probably... Yes. Probably. Just. <laughs> Why? Just. Okay. Oh, we have two mages with mage hands. Yes. They could work together, carry my shield, push it up in front of the thing. We can all walk through and then bring my shield back to me. And my glass jar. And your glass jar. <laughs> we, have meets. we can also test that before we walk through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm How cool many with that chicken plan? wings did you put? I was about to say, like, I've got a hundred pockets, but I don't think they're all full of chicken wings. <laughs> I'm only to say there's at least another ten. Yeah. And, cool. some, and some cute ham. Let's and do some... that. Oh, yeah. There's like a whole selection of food. However, you must keep an eye on that, because otherwise you're going to start whiffing something awful. No, no. Sealed bags. I'm, I'm, imagining, <laughs> I'm imagining there is definitely some sort of enchantment. He, he does Tupperware parties. At <laughs> I, I do have press the digitation to make things flavorful. So. so what's the plan? So I think the plan is use our mage hands to yeah. lift up the shield, block it, and then we can all proceed safely through to the next room. Test it with the chicken wing yes. first, of we'll course. Test it with the chicken so wing. So you get a mage hand a chicken wing. No, no you no, don't no, need your mage hand. No, you hold the shield in, if, and then you throw the chicken wing. If it's a proper chicken wing, it should be sticky. Just put it on the back of the shield. <laughs> Uh, uh, I've never uh, eaten uh, a chicken wing that well, adhered to I a The like mage, mage hand doesn't have to hold on to the handhold. I feel like we're the, making this the over... The handhold. So they can hold on to any part of it. And the can chicken wings can go the in the handhold. So just to understand what you're planning to do... <laughs> Well, you're, what the plan I is? Want, I want the audience to understand that Matt is currently now holding his head with his hands. <laughs> He's so, rubbing the point of his the point of his forehead, thinking, "Oh God, what have I gotten myself into?" So the plan is. You're going, <laughs> <laughs> the plan is you're going to mage hand a shield. Yeah, yeah. double mage. Double hand. mage. Sorry, double, double mage hand, double mage hand yeah, a shield. That's easy. And then float that up towards, which, you know, I'm going to argue is fine because you're basically grabbing a strap each or whatever. Yeah. Um, you're going to float that up to the front of the lion's, lion's mouth, mouth yes. and then throw a chicken wing at it. <laughs> yes. yes. No. Yes. No. Just throw a chicken wing into the area generally. That Probably not walking. looking to hit the, 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 the... But just, yes, to see whether... I actually, able to actually I can make, may I make an addendum to this plan? You certainly can. You don't want to throw the chicken wing behind the shield because obviously not. No, no. You want it to on the outsides to see whether or not it can it can shoot. We might have to do like yeah. a kind of pathway of chicken wings. Yeah. <laughs> As we walk through the front. And then yep. walk to that bit, pick it no. up and throw it. We don't want to run out of chicken to... wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can just use the same one. Yeah, we have... It's okay, you can just use the same one. We have a lot of shaved ham. We can just lay a floor <laughs> of shaved ham. I have a plate of it. Do you like a bad axe? 
<laughs> we can stride forward on a pathway made of ham. And it's, if it's a fleshy, petrified ham. Yes. It's, <laughs> if it's fleshy, not. then you can walk on it. If it's stony, if don't. If you put your foot down and it squelches, you're fine. <laughs> Shat, do we roll for that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why that's Oh funny. my goodness. Mage, <laughs> mage, 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 mage. So okay. you just can do yeah, that. Are, are we going to do this? Are we yes. Doing, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, so. Go for this plan. I have nothing better. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so the mage, like, I'm going to get you guys, to, like, mage hand is fine. Like, I don't think you'll have an issue with that because I think the rules are for mage hand, you literally need to basically concentrate on it if it's going to be an issue. <laughs> like, if, for instance, if you're trying to avoid someone from seeing it. Yeah, so mage hand automatically works, but it can only manipulate 10 pounds. That's it. If there's two mage hands, I imagine they can handle 20 pounds. So maybe give someone else the chicken wing and or ham so that they can... Oh, yeah, yes. I'll do the throwing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so... So I pass over a chicken wing... And I cast Mage Hand. Okay. And I cast Mage Hand. All right, so the shield sort of lifts up, although it's a little bit shaky, and it floats out across this semicircular sort of shape. Uh, the shield, where are you positioning it? Like point blank in front of the sh- yeah, thing? Just, just get the Mage Hands to hold it from the other side where it curves like that, and oh, like you're create a more, more of a seal. Because it, you know, a shield bends, mm. so you just make sure that all the edges sit against yeah, the wall. Probably like, like, like as, as far as, as much, like as this. far close as it yes. can go. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, like that. Uh, you didn't need to put your hand on your face. Oh, but I, I think he did. I <laughs> absolutely did. Okay. So <laughs> I will also go first because, cool. again, yeah. I'm wearing heavy plates. So you won't get yeah. affected as quickly um, if, if at all. If at all. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Just to I'm remind not you, not the, uh, the not little not gnome not who's not. been f- turned into stone is still wearing clothes. I'm taking his clothes. <laughs> okay. Not no, really the point I wanted to so make, annoying. but there no, we are. No, it's a good idea. I like that. Um, it's, it's, you're thinking outside of the box. I like this. Um, uh, let's, 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 so I say let's we test, test the front of us, and yes. if we can walk through let's that safely, that. we continue what? to test in front of us, okay, and so we what, should what, be what, fine what I suggest all the way might, there. We, we next do. Okay, so shall we do the thing, um, Mage Hand friend? Let's Mage let's, head friend. We ten- let's we gently tilt yes, the... Yes, we shall adjust it a little bit. Adjust it. Okay. Since you're trying to synchronize this, I'm going to get you guys to do a... Uh, Skill. In, um, I'm going to say a wisdom roll. Uh, that's, oh, no, yeah, roll d20. Yeah. Roll d20, add your wisdom modifier. Uh, 11. 11? 13. That's fine. You're fine. I get the feeling that Ryland is just sort of staring at you all from the back like, I'm what just, the I'm fuck just going, are you doing? Fuck do you, you have any organic material to throw? No? no. All right, then, fine. Then I'm close to my arms. I can okay, get it, this one it here. quicker. There you are. Okay. And then I will throw underarm, nice and gently, right up the center line. Yep. Um, and the uh, chicken. ideally, and going through the door. Yeah. That is the point. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the chicken wing splats against the door and hits the ground, and it's fine. There's... It's intact. It's no. It's not been petrified at all. I'm assuming it. It doesn't get hit. So it, like, but the it goes through charge. the doorway. No, there's okay. no response from the line. It goes through the doorway. Well, it hits the door and then hits the ground in front okay, of it. Okay, so the door is closed. No, no, it's ajar. Slightly ajar. But it's, it's oh, like that's right. I it's like a crack. Thing. Right, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's an ajar. So it's fine. Door. Yeah. Okay. It's it's almost as if someone left it ajar so that on the way back they could keep. So if we walk around. directly straight towards it, we'll be fine. I'll I'll head first. I'll head through first. Okay. Um. um so when he gets say fifteen feet in, I will yep. follow and pick up my jar. Yeah. With the delicious chicken wing inside, <laughs> which I'll point out is not petrified, and I will enjoy no, later. No, absolutely. <laughs> it's my chicken wing. Vine, you the, can uh, have it, but it's been in the no, stinky jar. Let <laughs> him eat the chicken wing, and you eat his pixie. No! <laughs> no, yeah, if you want to eat I, my pixie. pixie. No, it's, it's, it is a Sprite, thank you. Sprite. Oh, I apologize. Sprite. And it's a very smelly one. Are we continuing thing. through Do you the... keep that on your belt loop or something? Like, yeah. So I'll yeah. head through first, okay. see if it shoots at me at least. And then we can go through. Cool. Sure. So, are you sort of like gingerly stepping forward, I or are you just going to walk? The le- basically, I will f- walk at a chicken wing thrown pace. <laughs> That's quite fast. Yes. That's like a bolt. <laughs> well, it's, it's not. It's uh, like the chicken wing goes. I throw. That is I throw really. I, too how fast? I throw really quickly. Well, that's foolish. Fine, he walks out towards the door. I'm a harpooner, I'm sorry, I'm good at throwing shit. Yes, I will walk through the door at a regular pace. Slightly Do you want to stop at the door and maybe look in and check if there's anything bad in there? Well, that's the plan. Like, I'll I'll move to the door and then peek through. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, you walk unimpeded across this threshold. Um, the petrified gnome is sort of just as you pass it and look at it. It's I'm like he's also naked. No, no, he's not naked. No, he's no, used because he I stole his clothes. clothes. Okay, you would have to rip the clothes off because yeah. they're on his petrified person. Or does he have to this stone? Can we take oh. his body? For, and then we can we like cool rob shit. him maybe? Are we going through the door? Just while we're here, we've picked up the glass jar and swapped chicken yes. wing and sprite. Yes, thank you. Sure. Yeah, put put the now slightly greasy chicken wing jar <laughs> with us. Uh, can I just keep the chicken wing and have the sprite and the chicken wing yes. in the jar? No, we'll, we'll let you have, That's oh, good of you. have a you. chicken wing. You're I've introducing still got my moisture seven. into I think a we jar. Ended up there. No, I'm introducing chicken wing. Which a is a lot of moisture into a You have a no jar. idea. <laughs> as long as you're happy basting it in a delicious so marinade. so happy. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come after the do- the dwarf, which is what I presume would happen yeah. anyway. Okay, since you're being so cautious, um, just before you go in, uh, Scan and Clarence, uh, you crack the door open a little bit to look at the next room, and as you do so, you are hit by a blue illumination that you discover is from a series of um, brackets, uh, braziers, that are bolted to the wall in um, 30 foot intervals. And the hallway itself in the next room um, appears to go on almost infinitely. Do we grab the shield? No, yeah. blocking the thing. When we go through the door. The mage hand. And we close it, it behind us. So you not, the, have... not the one that's been blocking the, yep. the light, the other one that presumably belonged to the halfling. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so the three the three inch high, sort of, three foot high, sorry, not three inch. Sounds good. So, yeah, yeah, I rolled a 20 to check for traps, and I've walked basically down as far as I can. So with this about 50 line. foot. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no problems. No problems, no, no traps. No problems, no traps. Do I find the end of the hallway? <laughs> no, it's still pretty far ahead. Path is clear, come not through. Not seeing any traps Okay, um, as you turn around, you notice that the door behind you has disappeared. Oh, fuck. Oh. Oh. So in its place, you actually see the mirror of the hallway that you were seeing when you first entered. A blue illuminated bracketed hallway that appears to disappear into the distance. It appears to be a long hallway. Doesn't mean that it could actually we, could we, is. I don't know. Like, should we shoot an arrow with maybe a, a chicken wing attached? I'm going to pick up the chicken wing that is the next to the door, the one that we threw and throw the one it on the forward. Ground. Yeah. Um, yeah, it flies down and splats on the ground. Okay. Good thing to throw. Okay. We'll, we'll make sure to get that on our way through. Yeah. I yeah. would like to light a torch with the blue flame. Sure. It's magical. It might reveal a hidden mm. exit. I've got a torch that hasn't been lit. Okay, so see. I'll try and I'll try and light it with this blue flame. Okay. Yep. So you put it Keep up to way. the flame and uh, it ignites a regular coloured flame. Uh, that's not going to help me. I might need your glass jar. <laughs> <laughs> My Can... sprite is getting very smelly. I, I do apologise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I need something to contain one of these embers that are burning blue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got smithing tools. Mm-hmm. So I've got tongs for yeah, handling hot stuff. I don't stuff. have anything yep. better than that, I'm um, sorry. That's fine. And I'll see if I can place a burning blue ember yep. into the jar. Sure. You take the uh, blue ember from the brazier and you place it into the jar and it immediately turns to an orange ember rather okay. than a blue one. So I transfer that back and assume that it's not the blue flame. As you transfer do. it back, it turns to a blue flame. Yes. Blue My jar is not large enough to contain all of the blue flames. Yeah. I'm, it's a pretty big jar. I'm relatively strong. I'll see if I can pull one of the braziers off the wall. Okay. Do you need yeah. strength here? That's a 17 plus 3, 20. Nice. Okay, so you put your foot up against the wall and you grab it with both your, your dwarven mitts and you pull and it doesn't move immediately, but then there's this sort of groaning metal sound and you actually pull the rivets out of the wall that are holding this thing. The flames sputter for a moment, but retain their color. You also have what appears to be like four inch thick iron bolts attached to the brackets that were actually holding this thing up. Those could come in handy. Definitely. (laughs) For removing eyeballs. Let's go forward about, I don't know, like... Okay, so we walk down the corridor. So you just plow on through? Yep, we keep walking. That's how Rylan rolls. Sure. 
wasn't my idea. Okay. Um, you get about 100 foot and nothing's changed. And the, it appears like, if you glance behind you, it appears that nothing's changed either way. It did like an infinite loop. Mr. Mr. Dwarf Man. Yeah. May I borrow your hammer for a brief moment? I will return it immediately. This is a holy relic that's older than my family. I will be honest, I intend to smash it to the floor. But you did that earlier. That's perfectly fine. (laughs) 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 It's a holy relic. I don't want anything, but you can smash it into the floor. That's fine. It is a hammer. Um, I'm looking for some sort of treadmill device. This is an illusionist we are dealing with. We are walking along an infinite loop. That's not possible, which means that we are currently trapped in an illusion. So we are looking for a way to break the illusion. We've tried putting out the flames. We're thinking the flames are the cause of the illusion. So I'm looking for a physical way to now break the illusion. We are actually, I think, carrying the illusion with us, but I want to break the floor first. We also haven't put out all the flames yet. Yeah. Yeah. So Can I hit the floor? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Do I need to roll a strength thing for this? Um, Actually, I'm going to say yes. Okay, what, what, what? Uh, Just roll your dice and add your strength modifier to it. Uh, Six. And your strength? That's that's six. Okay. Uh, You bring the hammer down. Can I try again? (laughs) uh, It bounces off and actually is like, uh, it's almost like hitting a... um, Trampopoling. Yeah, it's like hitting something that rebounds. Those Uh, strength uh, tests at the showgrounds that are totally... May may I try again? Absolutely. Hit it a little harder maybe. Fucking dice. 20. There we are. 20. 22. Okay. It made Amy angry the first time. I was emasculated in front of this one heterosexual woman that we're with. Oh, I hate all of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you bring the hammer down and it cracks the paper that's beneath you, and it's quite an impressive masculine crack. Danke, Shan. Um, an actual echo occurs, and it appears to be reverberating down the hallway. But doesn't return to us? Uh, not as of yet. Shit. <laughs> okay. I say we try and get yeah, you rid of You can have your hammer back now. Danke, Shan. Thank you. That. Should I try hitting the crack with my axe? Um, this this one, Nezor is having an idea. I think I shall try and cast a spell on the flame. Oh, yeah. I can cast Prestidigitation, which can snuff out flames. So would you, do you want to try that? And what would you like to do with it? Uh, turn What's it off. The, okay, so you want to negate it entirely? Smother it, yeah. Okay. Smother That's the flame. All right. Okay. Yeah. The entire hallway goes dark. Ooh. Even the one in your hand goes out. They all Ooh. go out. Wonderful. You are in pitch black. And it's not something you can see with your low light vision either. You wow. have your torch. I do have my torch. So I light my torch. Wait. May I just get Hosh to hiccup? Fine. Don't let me leave me anything to Brush. do. No, no, because he will... He'll give I'm just seeing whether or not this can this yeah. can illuminate shit. Okay. Before wasting your... your... I'm fine. Rush. Yeah. Oh, you're a little cutie. All right, I would like a little flame, just a little one, just as a hiccup. Uh, yeah, frost goes, and um, there's a little gout of flame, and it appears like you're in a square room, <gasps> and it's very bland square bricks, and it's just, it looks, it doesn't appear to have a doorway either. Okay, and can we look up? Yeah, what's the ceiling look like? Um, the hiccup is actually extinguished before they have to get him to do it again, so we do the same so thing. So we can, we can get him to do it again, or you can light the torch. I think the I'd torch would probably torch. be a little All right, I use Frosh to light my torch. And ignites the room again, and I assume you're all looking up? Mm-hmm. It is much the same as the ceiling. It's look, you look like you're being encased in a completely square brick room. Can I go around and feel all the bricks and see if any of them compress? Absolutely. Um, would you that? please do a... Um, what has happened to this brazier? Uh, he still has it in his hand. Uh, there is but there also... aren't any of the others on the wall? Sorry, yes, you're correct. There is a brazier on the other side. But like two? No, only one. Just one. And there is a hole? Yes, there are two holes on the other side of the wall. Where... So he's ranked off one of the two? Yes. Mm. But the rest of them were illusion. Basically, yeah. Okay. Perception? Yeah. yeah. I'll do one as well to see if we can find yeah. anything. Okay. I'm going I'm, to I'm start hitting shit with hammers. Oh, I got four. Chill on that. Yeah, there doesn't appear to be any way out of 17. this 17. However, Clarence, with his experience and knowledge, knows that the best way to get out of anything is to hit shit until it breaks. All right. That was my hit thinking. Hit the other brazier. I was going to say, yeah, I will see if I can rend the other brazier off. 20 again. Okay, so you reef this thing out of the wall. It takes a little bit of effort, but you still do the same. And now you have two braziers. Would you mind... Breaking one of the walls, will I try and break the other one with your hammer? Yeah. I think we're still in an illusion. 
Yeah, me too. I was oh. going to, can someone check for magic? An illusion in the illusion. So actually, I'm going to. Arcana gonna, roll. I'm going to do the arcana roll. Okay, so roll. Let me just get your roll first, please. 11, 20. 22 20. on the arcana roll. And what was your roll? 13, 14. I had a I had a twelve. Okay, Ryland. Uh, yeah, this darkness is unnatural. You are probably in another illusion. So we've broken one illusion and trapped ourselves in another. Yes. Mm. Well, we turned one illusion off by turning the flames off. Ooh, could we light the braziers? Well, yeah, we could dis- rush, like destroy the braziers if they're the only other thing in the room. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, we already s- smashed them up pretty bad. Ooh, we took them off the wall. They're not destroyed. But they're just removed from the wall. Let's use the resource before we destroy the resource. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was going to say, did their rolls reveal anything more than just that? No, just she just had the highest one. Illusion. Um, we're still we're in a different illusion. Because the night is unnatural. You cannot see. Like you are still stumbling around the so, dark. So um, magic happens. breath here or magic breath on shoulder. Uh, lights, flames. Um, well, well mine's the, the ice only breath. thing that turned them off before was, was my magic. magic. So can you we use the magic to turn it back on? Yes. And I'll hold them. So like I, a statue. I will, I will like cast it. prestidigitation on the two braziers. Okay. Uh, what are you doing exactly? Just Lighting. regular flame? Turning them on. With okay. blue flame, so magical flame. Okay. He's aiming for a blue flame? That is the intention. Or just light them and see what happens. Because they could turn blue. If because yeah. if they if it if turns blue, if it's a normal blue, flame and it just goes blue, then it's the brazier. Then if we smash the shit out. Yeah. Them. Okay. Normal flame. Okay. So you ignite the braziers, and there is a moment where the dark seems to be crushing in on you, and it lifts, and you are in a very short hallway with another open door at the end. I like this doorway. Brad, I like these braziers. There are also no braziers on the wall anymore. What are the braziers? Doing. They're in Clarence's hands. And are they red or blue or they what? Are I mean, normal, 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 flame. normal healthful, healthy, normal flames. Are there any holes in the wall? Yes, where they used to be. And the floor? The floor has a crack in it. Okay. What does this oaken door have on it? May uh, I it has test nothing. For, it's just a normal oaken can door. Can I perception test for traps? Sure. 16 plus 5, 21. There are no traps. Excellent. It, uh, it appears that whatever bedevilment was in this room, you somehow outwitted. I'm so glad my uh, paranoia has rubbed off on you. Yeah, no. I just don't understand how the things I do. It's like, what perception test? I like them. Okay, let's do that all the time. <laughs> Shall we walk You take three steps. Door? Take the perception test. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's walk towards Let's the move door. to the door. I will hold the... Who's going to hold <laughs> the chicken wings? No, the chicken wings are back in the jar. <laughs> to admit, I have this mental image of like Clarence at the lead with like the... the, the Dude, brace, brace is on fire. And then, and Me holding a bird jar with a sprite and a chicken wing in it. Yeah, basically. And then, like, Nasa further back with, like, two chicken wings in his hands, like, <laughs> a ra- a lift a loft. Ryland looking very dispassionate and upset about everything, and then... Abella just like, I don't know. I would like to lay my hand on the door. Um, okay, so you place your hand on the door, and uh, it, you can feel the rough oaken sort of texture of it. It feels quite solid and quite sturdy, but you can also detect a slight draft coming underneath it and it's tickling around your ankles. Fine. Is there any way to see through the door? Uh, yes, by opening it. Ha <laughs> ha. Do you want to open the door, Ryland? Fine, I will open the door. Okay, you grab one of the large circular... Knockers. Yeah, the knockers. She and grabs the knocker. That's you, fairly appropriate. <laughs> that's She's quite good. Typical. She's quite I good like at grabbing knockers. She goes for the knockers. She grabs them firmly. And then Ryland throws open the door and is immediately blinded by a bright light that gently recedes as your eyes adjust. <laughs> and before you is a really f- quite fantastic sight. You can see appears to be some kind of library made of tree trunks. And these tree trunks are alive. There is a little babbling book near the door and you can see there is an immediate three sort of, uh, I guess you call them aisles. Uh, it appears that they kind of go in quite deep, but then the brush gets quite dark. So, um, and there is also sort of like fairy lights in the distance that appear to be sort of floating around. It is, like I said, about noon, according to the sun that's coming through. There appears to be like a very vaulted roof above you. But no orb of sun. Uh, what it appears is that the sun is actually coming through glass. The roof is made of colored glass. It's quite sharp. So it's like, like in a greenhouse? A... Something like that, yes. But there, so but there is a sun? Yes, there appears to be something beyond the glass. It's like there is like another roof above it, and sure. then there, but you can't see any details beyond it because it's too bright. Does someone want to throw a chicken wing in? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you? You will become one of us eventually. <laughs> Fine. Could I have a chicken wing, please? I think that chicken wing, yeah. Thank you. Forgive me. Passes this... chicken wing to Ryland. Thank you, Clarence. 
My pleasure, Ryland. <laughs> so I'm not a snobby bitch anymore. Maybe I'm, a little bit. You are, but it's part of your charm. Aw. And I gently you throw the chicken wing the into the forest. Um, the chicken wing lands in the forest. Eaten <laughs> <laughs> by a hawk and clown chicken cries. wing. It's <laughs> such an adventure. <laughs> It, it, ha- it, it now has it now has a bit of dirt on it. <laughs> like it's oh, just oops. landed in sort of the grass. Like, it's already been thrown three times I'm and stored with it. a sprite, like like a badly. Right, the chicken wing right. has landed unharmed in the forest. I say we're probably all right to continue on. I'd like to investigate the books themselves, um, just to see what they are. I okay, I will just take the oh, least yeah. abs- assuming. So one that's sort of a, a black or a brown. Yep. Okay, there's a nice brown, thick leather book. Yep. You open it up, uh, the, the pages are blank. Oh, poo. So it's an illusion. Mm-hmm. Yes. What I would... And we've already gone through several illusions. This is an illusionist place. Okay. I want to climb a tree and get to the top. Yes. Um, yeah, no, you, um, you begin to climb, and there's no issues because you're using basically the bookshelves as a, la- a rudimentary ladder, and you get about halfway up, and then you're starting to get into sort of an, a section where the actual tree becomes a tree again, and there's branches and such. You are going to need to roll me a dex check to see if you can go higher. 12. Okay, 12. Um, yep, you're able to make your way through the canopy. Um, you uh, disappear from sight from these guys. Um, Yay, we split what, the party! What, what, what was that, what was that <laughs> you disappear from sight. No. What can I see from where I am? In the far distance, you can see what appears to be a sort of... It's almost like a temple entrance. It is appears to be a large wall made of stone mm-hmm. with uh, four large columns and a doorway. And it seems to be about... Oh, 600, 700 feet away in oh, the distance. It's much closer. But it, you can't particularly, you can't see it, you couldn't see it from the ground. It was very much shadowed. You can't see the temple feet. for the trees. Basically, yeah. It, it seems to that you've, it's, it was quite enclosed. Mm. Is um, there any change in scenery in terms of the foliage? Is it all kind of like trees, 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 trees temple? Or are there like it, desert? It does or appear river? to be, well, so uh, you're, you're looking. In terms of landmarks, what would I see if I'm looking at okay, the temple? So you're between? looking in the direction you came from, so where you're looking forward, that's what you could see. If you glance to your left, you can see very much the same in, in terms of trees, but you can mm-hmm. also see what appears to be, again, another rocky wall, but this one appears to have a waterfall. If you look to your right, so uh, what you would estimate to be east, um, what you can see a sort of a rocky outcrop that appears to be bleeding magma, and to the south you can see what only can be determined as basically just an expanse that seems to go on forever, um, but the trees do abruptly stop. So stop. go between the waterfall and volcano. Cool. Can I get another action, or do I have to wait? Uh, well, no, that's what you could see. I'm just going to go back to. Um, sure. uh, what, do we want to? And we don't want, obviously, want to cut down the tree that that one just climbed. But um, could maybe shoot the ceiling first. It's less oh, invasive yeah. than cutting down a tree. Did you have? Yeah. And um, like if it doesn't have a work, bow and arrow, we'll fall I back have a long to bow. Earth. Awesome. Well, it's only sixty, Sorry, exactly it's only 60 foot in the air, so you I mean you could you could hit it easily. I could throw a harpoon if mm. you like, but I shoot an arrow. Um, we'll tie a chicken wing to it, though. Just <laughs> 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 I'll need another chicken wing, please. <laughs> Fine. Are we actually doing this? There's, there's the one that uh, you threw actually, off mine can on the I floor. Get, can I get, Nezor, can I get you to roll a perception check, please? Don't give away any more chicken wings. Eight plus uh, one. Nine. Nine? Okay, no worries. Okay. No, everything's fine. Okay. I'm not I'm not trying to say that to freak you out. I just everything's fine. Don't trust it. Okay, yeah. so no, 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 not, not at all. Yeah. No. I spear Never, ever, the chicken ever. wing. Are we <laughs> actually throwing the chicken yes. wing? Yes. Okay. Just be warned. We Can only I be have clear? five is this chicken wings. the sprite wing? chicken wing or is no. this another? No. It's the sprite this is the sprite chicken, chicken wing. wing, but the sprite has nothing to do with it. The it's sprite all, and the jar are back on my It's the dirty sprite chicken wing. Okay, it's the dirty chicken wing that I threw into. that no one is going to eat. Oh, so you so you're going to pick the one up on the ground? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's no longer there. Oh, fuck. My chicken wing. Damn it. I was going to eat that we, later. We should probably get that. Can't back. we smell it? They seem I, important. I would suggest that we don't stand on the ground. Okay, so the only one who, of us who is not ideas. standing on the ground, we can no longer see or hear. Um, should we follow Abella? Sorry, speaking of Abella, Abella, what are you doing? You're up at the top of the tree. Don't yes. split the body. I, Party's already split, mate. Right? My in, what I would do first is try to make it back down to inform the others of my. Okay, so just climb down. Yep, just climb down. 
Okay. Um, just roll me a dexterity check real quick. 16. Oh, damn it. I was really hoping you'd fall. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. you, you because climb, he's a bastard. You climb down and... Uh, Safely. You all <laughs> see Abella re-emerge from the canopy above oh, you. Well, that's nice. I would have been skipped. Um, yes, and she's in perfect shape. She's and she tells us everything that she just saw? Well, that would be up to her to say. Hi, guys. I've just come down from the tree. Oh, hello, <laughs> elven rogue. Yes, yes, yes. This is um, very all going Back the way. It's like the first time we've ever had this sort of. <laughs> back the way we came is a temple about 600, 700 feet. A temple? A back temple. the way we came. Back the way we came. I understand. And if we go, if we run into a waterfall, we have gone too far west. And if we run into a stone. Emitting magma, we have gone too far east. Unless of course emitting we magma. Magma. Red. And just like oh, hot and stuff. Unless we want to go to either of those things. In which I case, don't necessarily know that we want away. to go to either of those I things. I think the temple. The temple behind good. us. The one that we just came out of? Is it is it where you would feel like where we just came out of? We should probably maybe just climb up. And have a look. I yeah, like shall we all climb up and have by, a look? I'm I'm pretty dexterous. I, I know I am. It. I despise the idea of climbing. But you don't want to be on the ground athletics. anymore. No, Why don't you hit the ground with I'm your hammer? Oh, or a chicken wing. No, no, no. <laughs> I feel like the hammer would be better. Why don't we plant a chicken wing? And Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> My it ideas are being sensible. Can shelf. we? Can we? Can we throw the? Can we? Can we shoot the thing at the ceiling? Yes. Yeah, let's uh, do that. Sure. We, so we I think Riley has just that. been sitting there with the boat clock. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> she's just like, my biceps are getting me know. And then she goes, she's just, so much. <laughs> just, my arm oh, is getting tired. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, so I shoot at the ceiling. Okay, just roll me a um, attack. Uh, 16 plus. Yeah, you're fine. You loose, the, you loose the arrow from the bow. The bow, it flies into the air. The arrow sticks into the ceiling with the chicken wing stuck to it, so and nothing happens. This glass ceiling you're talking about? Yes. That's where the, the arrow sticks, or there is a the rock arrow, ceiling? The arrow sticks to the glass. But sticks to, or it embeds, in, like itself it, it embeds itself in? It embeds itself in. Is there yes. any cracking? Yes, there's, slightly, uh, there's a bit of slight cracking, but it doesn't appear to do anything. There is now just this lonely chicken wing. How being far can you hunt Sort of slowly <laughs> dripping there down. There is no chicken wing. Give me a chicken, chicken wing. wing <laughs> so, can we just stand so, under it and get Sorry, ah. let me be clear. The chicken wing that was thrown on the ground was missing, but I assume you put a substitute a chicken wing. Chicken. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're down just one so more clear. chicken wing. Make so a we're, note. we're on five. <laughs> Okay. We're not on to the cured ham yet. Good lord. <laughs> oh, we will never use the cured ham. And the roasted pork? Fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> that, 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 that is, that is my for dinner. <laughs> dinner. That is my dinner. Anyway. When you get hit by like a pellet from a, a pistol and it goes through the, the smoked ham. <laughs> no! <laughs> not the smoked ham. But it also saves your life. And Nezor. <laughs> not okay. the smoked ham okay. and Nezor. So what are we doing again? I, uh, I, I want to lose another arrow next sure. to the second. To see mm. if at the ceiling again? At the ceiling again. Don't attach a chicken wing to it. There is no, 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 no chicken that's wing. That's not going to achieve I anything. I just draw my bow and I shoot again. Okay. Shoot at like the end of one of the so cracks. She's lost, lost one of the 20 arrows. Yeah. I have 19 arrows left, so I'm that's about to make it 18. So I shoot again. 12 plus 4, so 16. Yep, you loose this arrow and it hits the ceiling pretty much where you're aiming, which is like the end of this crack. It hits and embeds itself, and there is a little bit more fracturing around the impact point. There's no. But pieces. there's no falling pieces. Mm. So what do we do? We want to keep trying to destroy the ceiling, or do we want to head towards the temple? I don't know if we have enough arrows for that. Yeah, I don't think that's going to. Oh, can, can I ask, in a purely purely theoretical note, hit the floor with a hammer? Oh, well, I was going to say, suggest throwing my throwing axe. No, but I'll no, we've it. already established we can damage the ceiling. Can we damage the floor? Okay, I will. Seeing as the, the floor seems to make All stuff right. disappear. All right. So uh, roll your turn. 18. Okay, so you hit the floor Plus and five. <laughs> the grass did not like that at all. There was now a divot in the ground, and that's about it. Okay. So it's 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 as you would hit a grass. Yeah, clump of earth. Did yes. we end up trying to write in the books just out of curiosity? We didn't, because you just climbed away. <laughs> and yeah, you distracted was, us. And it was great. We do, do we do She's we have got a do we have set? And I believe you. I have. I have. I have a counterfeit set. I take it out and try yep. to write on one of the books. Probably the one you grabbed out before. What are you writing? My name. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, you that's... Use them your name. Self-obsessed. 
<laughs> Elf wish. Just first name, so Abella. Abella. Abella takes the quill out of her pack, dips it in some ink, and brings the, the quill to the page with a bit of a flourish and writes her name. And, and it bursts name- into flame and she dies. No, the name oh, actually damn. disappears into the page and the page itself turns black. <gasps> but nothing Ooh. else happens. Do we want to so, do... Do we have any different coloured inks? What colour any... ink was the one that she used? Black, presumably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Do we have berries? Is there berries? Uh, you can't see any immediately in your vicinity. Is there anything... However, if you explored beyond like 20 feet from where you are, you might come across... Well, I was going to suggest that I'll blood. grab some... Don't sacrifice your blood to the book. <laughs> My goodness! I've already sacrificed my name! <laughs> I just love... We could <laughs> try the dwarf burning is telling something me not and to using sacrifice charcoal. My blood to a book. <laughs> I was going to say, let's try some grass, because that's green. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wiggle yeah, some grass yeah. on there, yeah. and I'll write a Bella. <laughs> okay. How, well, I don't know how we name. can write. So pick up some grass, switch and do the little thing. And make Just sort of like, you put a grass, grass juice. Yeah, okay. We make grass juice, and well, then we try jar. to... have a you can make that in if you like. <laughs> Just, Just do it, please. <laughs> Just, then we, we, we try to that. write my name again. Okay, this is going to take a little bit of... I just want to see if it turns white. On a different page, by the way. It changes colour to green. But nothing else changes. So words. We should keep this. Book. I was going to say I'm going to grab a handful of those books and put them in my backpack. Particularly the book that we've been writing. In. Yes. Especially the book. Just because if I can become light, super and book kill wizard with my books, then I'm cool. concerned that I'm like. Can oh, can can we we'll all see. grab a couple of books? I'm I'm going to keep the one I've been writing in and grab I'll one more. Yeah, you have your soul that. book. You can yeah. have your book that you sacrifice your name book. to. Do we want me to try and cut mm. down a tree? Um, yeah. Maybe Ooh. one that we're not planning on climbing. Yeah, or absolutely. Or rob any books from. <laughs> Just pick a random tree that we haven't interacted with and have a swing at it, see if um, that does anything. Okay, so roll me perception. All of us? Just Because right. we're too busy rooting. <laughs> <laughs> Steal the imaginary uh, books. 12. 12? Okay, there is a small sapling sort of to your right-hand side. It actually doesn't appear to have much in the way. It's like a single shelf, very like maybe two books wide. Um, <laughs> but it does appear to be growing with the bookshelf built inside it. Okay. So you could easily hack this in half with your axe. All right, I'm going to have a swing at it. Plan. All right, just roll me a strength check. You don't actually need to attack this thing. You just need to see okay. if you can smash it in half. 14 uh, plus... Three. So it's it's 14. 17. So, yeah, you swing the battle axe, make a grunt of effort, which I'm assuming you're going to do for me. <coughs> and, uh... God. Lesbians. Lesbians. I make that oh. noise when I come. <laughs> and then what happens? The book tree is bisected and nothing happens. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that didn't do shit. What's the middle of the cut down bit look like with the bookshelf? It looks like a stump with sap. No, that's not exciting at all. Like, so did, where did she hit it? Where did you break it? Like in the middle of a, br- in the middle, like if I was going to cut down a tree that looked partially like a bookshelf, I would actually be cutting it down where the, halfway through the book. Shall we I think we should the move temple? on from the tree. Yeah, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think we're going to get anywhere with the that's trees. Point, yeah. Oh, can we actually, can we break off? Can we break off a bit of the branch and like stab one of the books with it and just see if that does anything? This isn't Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes, ah, and a small flame. And well, then Tom Riddle appears and tries to <laughs> I'm going okay, to try. Yeah, so she, you watch Abella march over, grab one of the branches that. Um, may, uh, Abella, may I suggest that you don't use the one that currently possesses your soul? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I break, get one of the branches. <laughs> yep, snap it off. Yeah. Get a new book off a tree. Yep. Any colour and stab it. Yep, uh, you stab that book. Ah! Nothing happens. Oh. Put a chicken wing in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to run I, out of this I, chicken wing. The I, point I, is if we write a bell like, no, write someone's name. Write it in the grease from the chicken oh, wing. What was the name of that noble? Write uh, his name in the d- book d- and then stab it. Yes. Okay. Um, can I we quickly ask we, 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 in Greece? <laughs> <in laughs> we, we have no indication of it either. I'd just like to register that I feel like, I, I, I know D&D is fairly popular as a game, but I'm fairly confident that no group of adventures have ever decided to write the name of their employer in chicken grease. <laughs> <laughs> on a on an illusionary book in the middle of an illusionary forest in the bottom basement of a tower belonging to an illusionary wizard. Can I ask the arrow that's in the top with two the chicken arrows, wing on it? Two arrows. Is the chicken wing starting to slide down? Is that going to come down Is at any greasy? point? There are no arrows. <gasps> But I wanted those back. So is it, has, the, has the ceiling the repaired itself? The chicken wing! Absolutely. Okay, don't worry. When we break the illusion, which I think is the way to go here, 
I'll get my arrows Then back. with the arrows. And theoretically, the, the floor <laughs> check in as well. <laughs> yes. Let's go to the temple. Okay, so let's use cardinal directions. Forward is north, backwards is south, left is west, right is east. Which north. way are you heading? North. 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 Okay. No problem. All right. Away, so, away from the place we came. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So you start to wander through the towards the temple. That's correct. And there, it starts to get quite dark as the light starts to get thinner through the trees. Do yeah, the sounds light. of the forest change in terms of the animals and things like that? Um, it has. And it's getting light. dark. What it's about the dark. sky? What is that doing? Is oh, that the right? sound. Can't actually see the sky, sky all that well. There's all the branches. What about the, sounds? the branches are actually blotting out the light. Um, it appears that there are sort of like lights floating around you. It's quite, it's almost magical. Almost, um, you say? Almost. I would just die entirely this magical, is, but entirely the magical. effect is almost magical. Oh, okay. Mm. What about the sounds of the forest? It has actually gotten quite quiet. There doesn't appear to me any sort of ambient noise. The only thing that you can <gasps> sort of right. hear is your own footfall, uh, your own heartbeats, and the occasional whisper that appears to be coming from behind the trees. Cut down all of the trees. Can we burn one of the trees? Actually, no, we're in the forest, we'll die. Can Never we mind. burn <laughs> the braziers? Hush, yes. like I... the braziers. Hush. Or we could he use He makes a very annoyed noise. He's been interrupted far too many times. Feel free to not harass your poor dragonling. He's and we my can friend use and he, like, frankly, if he's going to be a lazy ass and sit on my shoulder all the time, the least he can do is light fires every now and again. You are a dragon, that's what you're for. I resent your generalizations of dragon kind. I find it very offensive. I apologize. I you're like a bronze you know. dragon. That's what you're for. Anyway, Nizo, I'm I'm holding them out. Precious distance. Yes, you light them on fire and your Ross had immediate... a pissy fit and went back to sleep. Apparently. Well, he did that cat stretch where they sort of arched their back and then he went back to yeah. He he actually dug his Useless little claws in dragon. your shoulder. So what happened when we dragon more light? Did uh, anything it change? It illuminated the immediate area around you, much like light would. Or um, <laughs> the little bubble lights that appeared to be following you sort of scattered. Now. Can we, like, chase them a bit and see what happens? Probably not. But not, like, outside. Just, like, wave your torch at them. Can I'm, I? I'm can probably... I? Wave. I'm going to, going to go slightly. I, can I make, firstly, make a perception check for, well, not, an arcana check? Sure. Three. Not very high. Four. Three. Uh, these appear to be some kind of magical lights, possibly sentient, possibly magical effects that are sort of just tracked to follow you. It could be part of the illusion. In which case, I would now like to take the dead sprite out of my jar mm -hmm. and hold it at the... <laughs> this is okay. what happened to you! Fuck off or this will be you! <laughs> this one. No, just to see if a reaction, like one way or t'other. Uh, okay, so you withdraw the sprite from the jar and hold it forward, and there is immediately a high-pitched screech. From At which point I very quickly put the sprite back in the jar and the put lights, the chicken wing in with it. The lights disappear immediately, and you're left in the dark, apart from your, your braziers. The whispering that has been following you has become decidedly more malevolent. Oh, oh. no. You twat. are welcome. What did you... <laughs> Why did you do that? I don't like the dead sprite. Okay. They are getting closer as well. There's sort of like a... The lights or the, the whispers? The whispers. There's no lights. There is zero illumination beyond your pole. Roll for perception. Go ahead. Four. Uh, you hear a rushing wind, but that's it. I'm going to roll for Arcana. Can I roll for perception? Sure. Everyone can throw perception. That would be an 18. Okay, you hear the beating of a hundred tiny wings. A hundred tiny wings? So That's fucked. not upsetting at all. Fucked. Guys, guys, I just heard the beating of a hundred tiny wings. Couldn't you have left it in the jar? And I'm going to put shield of faith on Josh because he's the one that pissed them off. Thank you. So you now get a plus two to your AC. Okay, from your right, a sudden gust of, uh, the best way to describe it would be angry small winged people burst in and basically hit you uh, in a surprise attack on the roll of dice. What's your AC? Uh, 16. 
plus yes. the two. 18. Yeah. Tiny little people with winged uh, forms that look awfully like the sprite that's dead in your jar um, start buffeting you. However, they sort of misjudge the angle and they appear to be bouncing off your armor mostly, but they are basically throwing themselves at you as tiny little pellets. You will be rolling disadvantage on any checks while you're sort of engulfed in this sprite storm. Okay, but it's not uh, not not hurting me at all. No, they've um, hit your central mass, which is projected by your armor. So, if they are doing damage to you, it's not getting through you. It's just it's sort of like being pelted so, by rocks. So but. we want to find a way out of this. And I say we, I mean I want to find a way out of this. Uh, so to be to describe it properly, you are engulfed in a sort of. Sp- so the, can they even it's hear what dust. I'm saying? Like I it might. Is like, it, you are, it's like you're trying to yell through a hurricane. Right. Right. We should probably find a way out of this. <laughs> uh, you may all want to roll initiative is I, what I would suggest. I was going to say before that, I was going to try and communicate with them because they're yeah. sentient beings yeah. and sort of go like... Oh, sure, you can do that. Please, stop. We meant no offence. Uh, they do not heed your pleas. They are buffeting themselves uh, themselves against. Is all of them? There yes, is none just sort of, hanging they, around. They, they all like roll me a perception, just very quickly. Uh, Seventeen. The best way to describe it would be sort of like a glazed look on their face, like they're a bit triggered. Well, yeah, they're enraged, but it's not something you could reconcile with them by speaking to them. They're quite. It seems like they are attacking him because he has a injured or dead version of him. It's like when it's like when a bee or a, something stings you and leaves like a pheromone. Can I put the jar with the sprite in it on the floor and walk away from it? Well, you are currently being buffeted by these creatures, so yes, you may, but you also incur attack of opportunity on you. So basically you can do this, but I will be rolling attacks against you while you do so because you're trying to do something while being Oh, instead of that, can I reach through with the um, magic hand and get the jar and then put it somewhere sure. for him? I'm going to do that. I like that plan. I'll just stand perfectly still. Yeah, you stay. You don't do anything. Okay. So I take the jar with the greasy the dead jar. sprite in it and I place it gently on the ground a few metres away from... Meanwhile, you're like, ah, ah! <laughs> No, I'm actually standing very calmly. I understand my mistake, and I, I'm just like, someone else deal with this, because it may incur me a penalty okay, if I Okay, you don't. place the sprite on the ground, and the sprite storm starts circling around it and actually starts lifting it off the ground. Ooh. Is the jar closed? Yes. They appear to be lifting it and trying to recover it. it would Do you want me to, like, be open a corked it? jar? So, because they didn't add um, screw caps. They were well, wrong in perception. Need- Eleven. Eleven? Um, they're exerting themselves so much on trying to lift this and break it and open it and chew on the cork and all that sort of stuff. Like actually, some of them are having these tiny little heart attacks and they're actually falling dead on the ground. Oh, there you go. You've I'm got just going to grab one. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to, it's probably going to damage me, reach in and open the fucking jar. Do you want me to just do okay. it with my do it the magic handy hands. thing? Yeah, come on, you do it. Oh, I guess you We've could. We've got two. We've got this one. Yeah. You can, you can do you want to, like, hand. team up? Magic hand, buddy? Magic hand, you are. Right. Rides again. All so right. go in. I'll I'll hold it and you... I use my magic hand screw. to pop it open. All right, you do so. Uh, the swarm immediately goes inside the jar and lifts this corpse out and then uh, sort of recovers the, the corpses that are around. Were you trying to grab Damn one it. of them? He um, already grabbed no. one before the jar No, I'm open. not going to grab one of them. All right. Um, and I they would only grab one if they all went away. They immediately sort of swarm into the air and disappear just as quickly as they hit you. And the forest is dead quiet. You're quite ruffled up. You've, your hair is all misplaced. Your clothes have tiny little scratch marks all over them. You look quite disheveled. How's, how's Frosh? Frosh is like on all fours, like a cat that's freaked out. He's just like Aww. sitting there with his little, like his mouth is sort of like just constantly breathing flame and he is not happy at all. Um, you can tell from the sort of link that you guys have that he is both frightened and very angry from being disturbed. I am going to try and soothe him. 
Do you want me to roll for that? In no, some what way? are you planning to do? Um, I'm, I'm going to like use that link that we have like at a far more deep level than I've ever than I've ever used before. Okay. I would actually like to try try and like up to this point I've just been poking him and it, like we are we are friends. Yeah. Um, he has been long time friend thing, and I would now I'm not like no it's okay we we can we can actually genuinely I know you are sure. now just roll very me a, frightened. Uh, roll me a persuasion check. What about animal handling? Okay, yeah, no. We'll use that as well. I would have thought that he's not so much an animal as he is an, an entity that you persuasion, would Persuasion, because I did persuasion. Well, whichever you'd like to use. Mine is a plus two for persuasion or plus five for animal handling, but like... I, Which would you prefer to use? Because either because it's applicable, it's just how you do it. Persuasion is you're using the calming, soothing tone of your voice, or animal handling, I would say, is more of a physical thing, like you're trying to stroke him and calm him down physically. I, I see what you mean. I feel like persuasion would probably be more appropriate. Okay, you're, do you're right. right. We'll give that. It's 11 makes it plus... Two is thirteen. Okay, he's a little bit calmer, but he's still a little bit on edge. Can and I can I coax him up to my shoulder? Oh, well, he's on your shoulder, his... but he's dug his claws in. It's just okay. not quite as dug in. Right. You, are, you are bleeding a little bit, but you haven't uh, only taken. Well, I'm wearing armor. Yeah. Well, yes, I suppose that's true. I'm also like I I do think that somebody like I I don't know if I I was specific about this earlier, but like I always imagined this character as having a leather. Yes, <laughs> I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. On his right shoulder, on his left shoulder like for the dragon, because that's where yeah. Yeah, pretty much, because the dragon likes that, and once he established that the dragon liked sitting there, that's always what you we try to avoid left. being clawed further. Yeah, no, yeah. that's fine. Um, he has dug them in, in quite deep, but he's not quite so freaked out. He's not so freaked out. The no, flame he, still coming out. Yeah, he's kind of stopped, but um, he's still like a little bit like on edge. You get sort of a very disgruntled feel from him. Um, mm. And yes, he's uh, well, you he's chill. We won't ask fire. anything from Hobby or Hobby. Has anything caught on fire from the little bits of flame? Out of curiosity. No, no. Uh, the flame was not extensive enough. Is there wind now coming? No. Or is okay, there yeah, what's the about the whispering in the forest? All gone. All gone. No. There's no lights. You're basically there alone with busiest. I'm going to pick the jar back up. Sure. <laughs> Reseal it without any dead sprites. Or time. chicken or wings. Or chicken wings. Mm -hmm. No, it's now a jar, which is, um, let's be honest, far more useful. Roll me a perception on that, actually. Uh, 25. Okay, uh, the uh, the jar has actually been licked clean. Oh. Ew. Ew. Yeah, no, it's uh, surprisingly <laughs> greaseless. I That's really think gross. they're hungry. <gasps> Can uh, we try to get to the temple? Could we have some of your meat? I want to try Why something. Why don't bring well, them back? We try to cure ham. Uh, something. Well, because... They like chicken. We established this. They live this here. We want to get out of here. If we can help them, they will help us get out of here. Right now, we did the complete I... opposite of going, look, we use your dead friends as decoration. Things we keep in jars. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Felspar. Back in Pinterest. What? I, I, I found out something new. <laughs> so, yeah, just like a little piece of hock or something like that. Enough to, you know, not, I don't need heaps. Just like I say, a, we give them the chicken wing, as that's what they have. Um, as a point, well, where um, I, I, all of the other, the, like the other two chickens wings we shot off are gone. Yes, so they're clearly hungry. So if we, if I could have the arrows are also gone as well. So do you, do we, are we feeling like these sprites are illusions or they're real things that inhabit the illusion? To find out. Okay, if I can have say two, two chicken wings down to sure. three. Um. And then I'm going to, just because the forest is pretty big, I'm going to use my thaumaturgy, which allows me to protect my voice, mm -hmm. like a booming voice. Sure. Um, so I don't want it to be, like, yeah. threatening, but basically... You need to do a roll for that, or...? No. Okay. Nope. It's a cantrip. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, and, like, I'll place the chicken wings in front of us and right. um, say, like... Um, Spirits of the forest, here is an offering. Can you assist us in our journey? Okay. Um, and like I'm sort of knelt yeah. down and I'm And you're preferring the, to the chicken to the So like the it's spirits. in front of me and I call out to them. A single sprite with a kind of glazed and feathered look flies out from behind a tree and lands on your fingers. Sniffs the chicken and then starts basically chewing on it and it's quite ravenous and it's basically just gnawing on the flesh. Sure. Um, and it, it kind of notices you and then stares at you for a second like with its mouthful and then finishes its mouthful and then just sort of... I don't move. I don't change my facial expressions. I sort of look at it 
but not stare at it. Yeah. Like, you know, so it knows I'm offering it. I'm going to look around us, check behind us particularly. Mm. Uh, you, there's nothing there. Like, even if you roll a perception check. If you want, you can roll a perception check. Uh, it's got its mouth full. It's got a little bit of... Um, 23. Uh... You can see a few little heads popping out here and there. Um, the one in your hand sort of has a mouthful of skin. It just sort of quickly nibbles the last bit and then takes off very quickly with a bl- uh, blur of wings. It disappears into the black. And then there's like a, a small pinprick of light sort of shines up. Yep. Which direction? Oh. Right in, in front of you, yeah. Right. So we follow. How much yeah. of the chicken wing oh. is gone? Uh, it's like a few, a few mouthfuls of sp- like sprite. Mm-hmm. We little nibbles. Do you want? Shall we like leave the, the rest leave of the it chicken or? rings and go? Are that we direction? taking them with or us, we, or, or shall we just us? like go through as a procession, like holding, holding out chicken less. wings? Guide us. Well, okay. yeah, I'm gonna sit here for a bit more and like again unimposing to see if more. None of the other. Uh, one okay. follow. However, Shall that light is sort I'm of thinking, still there. I'm it thinking. I'm thinking. Getting a bit dimmer. Procession okay, towards the light, yeah, we'll but holding out way. the chicken wing in case they yes. get yeah, sure. munchy. <clears throat> yep. And we'll, yeah, we'll head that direction. What do you think, Roland? I'll deal with it. <laughs> Danke schön. All right, let's go. Okay, so you trudge off We're through the king through the forest. Yep. Um, it has almost got to the point where the sole point of light is the braziers. Which someone else will need to carry because I'm... I, I'll happily hold one of them. Sure. I'll hold the other. Wonderful. Great. Uh, and you come to a small clearing with a small knelt statue. It's a human woman and she appears to be basically weeping like sort of into her hands. Um, Does she, she have angel wings? Does no. she want some chicken? <laughs> Can I roll a history and then religion check on it? Absolutely. Well, let's do religion first. That seems the most likely. Sure. Is she made of stone? Uh, yes. Seven. Does, so she would count as stonework, which means I get a bonus to history. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, religion said seven. Yep. It's, it's a woman kneeled belt over. Okay. <laughs> history. Yeah, 12. 17. 12? Look, there's nothing remarkable about this. It's just a statue. Yeah. Um, is she in any... Gonna, it doesn't appear to have any particular... Um, do we feel like she's been petrified? Can I do an arcana? Uh, it's a slightly larger than life rendition, but I suppose if you'd like, you can do it. No, if she's larger than life, she's like she's not doesn't look like a human woman who is just a huge person and got frozen. She's an actual statue. What's the you. statue doing again? Sorry, can you describe she's her She's sort of kneeling and weeping into her hands. Is there a puddle or like a fountain? No, it's a purely stone sort of statue. Can we walk in kind of, of in a circle around her and just clearing? inspect the pyramid? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's got a small clearing, but the branches are still quite thick overhead. There's very little Can light. Can we to see the sky? Going. I'm gonna do a religion check. Twenty. Hmm. You move a little closer to the statue, and you actually notice that further on behind her in the dark, there is actually an archway. And it suddenly occurs to you that this might be a rendition of the Lady of Bones. Ooh. Um, which, as you know, is... The goddess of death. Yes, mm. she shepherds the dead to and from the afterlife. It's a very unusual depiction of her. Um, the Lady of Bones is often depicted as leading people. Um, but in this Other case, than she, tearing up for them. Exactly. She doesn't. She's never really depicted as being upset about it, but in this case she appears to... Don't want to go through the archway. I'm going to kneel before the statue anyway and sort of thank her. Do you still have the chicken wings? Yes. <laughs> I don't know if yes. she'd want them. Oh, no, them. but like They're polite. Well, you they know. do have bones in them. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I'd like kneel down and and thank her okay. for yeah. her guidance because obviously yeah yeah and so, you know yeah 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 I I I actually am prepared to join you in this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, I'll I'll kneel down in front of the statue and sort of bow and thank her for her guidance. And again, I don't have much, but and put the chicken wings at her knees. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Cool. So you you place an offering, effectively. Pretty much. All right. Great. Um. Well, nothing particularly happens, but um, you do. F- I suppose in your own way, you do feel a little bit becalmed by this. The fact that you've sort of um, paid homage to a, a goddess who's been depicted here in a very unusual way. I suppose it's called, it's calming to yourself. I suppose. In what direction is this archway? The archway is, is directly we- behind her. But but in the way we are heading. So if she was, if, if we you were, were north, yeah. So basically directly north, and she's in between you and the archway. So there's. So the archway would be the way we are heading. Yes. Have we seen? 
have we walked around her yet and seen the back of her? No, you've basically approached the front and then um, uh, Neil Clarence Neil Can I in, in, in inspect the statue quite closely? Absolutely. If you'd like Is to it do a perception? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 24. 24. Say, don't touch. I wouldn't touch. Just... No, no, no. Uh, not <laughs> carefully, just sort of inspect the yes. workmanship and so forth. 24, okay. Um, this carving is almost too perfect. It's with any statue you can see, like depending on how, like when they carve the thing, you can sort of see where the chisel lines are followed. This doesn't appear to have any of that. Like it doesn't follow any natural sort of, uh, like any natural sort of stone line, which you would have known about working on things like, um, you know, stone masonry, just like for, just for things at home, like small walls and stuff for defense. Sorry. Well, you would have kind of known that too. Because woodwork you, maybe. Yeah, woodwork yeah. and that sort of stuff. But like you, you, you'd follow a grain. Yeah. And there doesn't appear to be any grain in there. It's like, it doesn't appear to be made of natural this, stone. This appears to be a, almost a, a, a magical. Possibly. Um, you'd or have to do a check. Can, we, can, I, can I try an arcana on this one? I want Absolutely. to see if there's magic involved. <clears throat> uh, 19. Um, it was possibly wrought from magic. Like it's possibly how it was came it came to being, but it's it it appears to be a real thing. It doesn't appear to be an illusion like you've been experiencing sure. before. Yeah, I still I still want to point out that we are still in an illusion. Mm. This is an illusion. Shall we keep going to the archway? Uh, I'm 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 careful of any archway that linked to the angel of death. I don't think this is an illusion. Do you reckon the archway? I is? think the light. May be an illusion, yeah, but yeah. the trees and all that aren't. Can we inspect the archway? Have we gotten to that? Yeah, you it's can. Not far, how far away is the archway? It's about ten foot behind okay. the statue. It's, I'm going to try and talk to the goddess. Obviously, okay. I'm not going to get audio this or that, mm. but uh, I'm I, basically mm. I'm going to sit there and pray to her mm -hmm. and see if she can offer any guidance of I'm, I'm uh just remind me is I'm not character? I'm the veteran ah, yes, but I still God. you know believe in the gods and yeah. I, even though I'm not her servant no but she would still be an intrinsic part of your faith it's yes thing. and it's I'll a think. pantheon rather yeah. than yeah. and it's especially if we're here to disrupt her or anger her in some way mm. I don't think she would be like oh well you don't you know you're not a uh, uh, essentially a death cleric. She's not so. a nasty person. Like, the death, the goddess of death is not. Yes. So Which it's like, I'm going to... Functional. While you guys do that, I'm just mm. going to basically pray to her okay. and see if she can give me some I want some to inspect guidance. this yeah. archway. Right. Well, um, you sort of are a sort of prayer-like position. Yeah, I'll t I actually pull, like, my armour off okay. and all that because, you know, it's less sincere if you're ready for that. Yeah, yeah. So I'll lay it all down and, yeah, get into okay. pray. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Arabella and I are going to inspect the archway. Okay. Obviously, again, respectfully, no touching. No, yeah, no touching, just closely inspect. I'm right. going to stand behind Clarence just in case. Guard. Axe yes. in one hand. I'm back there as well. How is your uh, um, arcana? Arcana? I don't think it's... No, it's just one. Yeah, so it's mine. So what would you like to do with the archway? Um, I first like to run my hands over it and actually feel the texture. I thought you said Please no. Please don't touch it. Oh, no, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Let's not touch this thing. Let's, do you want to do a perception and an arcana? Each, yeah. Hey, why don't I throw a chicken wing at it? You know as well, you just can assist each other. What's yeah. your perception? Uh, my perception, I've just rolled this 18. Mm -hmm. uh, 18 as well. The archway is made of a marble, and it's a very sort of rough-hewn marble, but it's um, it's very much intact, and there's no fault lines in it. It's again too perfect. Uh -huh. It feels like it was either wrought by magic or is some kind of illusionary. Is it a doorway, or can we see? It is an actual arch, like it is a. What can we see on the other side? No, it appears to be. If it, it's not so much a pitch black as it is muted. Uh huh. What do you so, mean by muted? As in like, like the you, lion's mouth. A little bit, yeah. It's blocked. Hmm. So, like, as in. It's not that it's pitch black, it's just you don't, there's nothing. That's all my friend. <laughs> May I have a chicken wing? Yes, you can have another chicken wing. I don't need a lot of chicken wing, just a little bit of throw. Oh, do you want, oh actually, no, you're busy. Never mind. He's, um, yeah, yes, he's praying. Because otherwise I would be I'm like, just going to throw, throw the chicken, chicken wing, wings. just so, well, you go, you're welcome to throw it, but I will throw it through and, and, and see if it turns to stone. <laughs> I'll, I will throw another chicken wing. 
Okay. So Nezor sidles up, withdraws a chicken wind from one of the many greasy pouches, and uh, hurls it at the the archway. Now, are you throwing it at the actual stone or through? Through. Through. Uh, the chicken wing disappears from sight. Oh, yeah. Right. We should have but tried. it doesn't appear to be doesn't appear to have like sort of just kind of disappeared. It's like it's just sort of faded from view. Can very we quickly. hear anything? No. Um, does anyone have any string or anything? I have fifty feet of rope. Can you tie some rope around some chicken <laughs> and throw it? <laughs> Not that you just rolled the dice. <laughs> and throw um, it and then well, pull it back. Frosh is actually showing some interest in the chicken wing. What, the one that we oh, threw? Oh, no. Yeah, he sort of like just perked up and poked his, poked his head out and watched it. I am very upset about the idea of putting the dragon. Don't put the dragon. No, just chicken wing. It's, well, it's just he followed the path of food, that's all. He was just interested in it. Mm. For the first time he's been interested so it, in it's something. it's still there. The door is very, they're very real. Do you want to stick a hand through? The, the, the magical creature on my shoulder is saying, hey, that thing happens. Out of context. Inequivocally, no. Okay. Do not put your hand through. Shh, just pray. Go just pray. <laughs> even, even, out in, of even in context. Don't <laughs> stick your hand through the mysterious magical arch. Well, can we put something on? When things go through, it's 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 no. <laughs> okay, well, let's get something long. And Do you have one of your harpoons that you don't... Yeah, you aren't well, it's particular. funny you should say that. I have many harpoons. Well, would you be okay just boop and then whoop? Sure. So putting it through and then bringing it back. Yeah. Let's, Let's try that. But not like spearing in case there's someone nice. No, no, nice. very, very, I will use Gen the blunt end. Blunt I will end. hold the, the nasty pointy end, but I will hold it below the pointy piece and I will put it through the doorway without putting my hand through the doorway. And maybe and hold it slightly to the side it. of yourself so in All case right. anything pushes it forward, it's like... Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, um, you do so very carefully, push it through and then pull it back and it's fine. Excellent. Okay, well that's and a good... now we... Do you want to... We balance a piece of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nick, watch uh, wait, Frosh. actually, piece no, no, wait. Left. Next, next, next test. I now prod the ground with the end of the mm. harpoon, the ground beyond the doorway. I prod it with the harpoon end without putting the harpoon like over here, like this. Okay. And so do like that. you push it through and prod the ground, and there appears to be a space there, and you don't feel the ground, but then there is something there that's hard, it's resisting, into the point where you're just like... Like it's floor? Yeah. Okay, okay. But, but it's is a good, it at it's the same probably, level as floor? It's probably a good half foot below. Ah, so it's a small hole. Can I we explore further? Far. Like yeah. how, the harpoons um, are... It's sort of, you sort of push it and it kind of follows the the stiffness of the ground and then just sort of disappears and then goes down another half foot. and then okay. so like another. It's like stairs. Yeah. Yes. We, ha we haven't gone far enough for this to be the entrance to the temple. No, and it's also going down. So I guess the key thing is, do we want to do more testing and maybe try out this one or do we want to go to the temple where actually aim is So just bypass the doorway and yes. carry on? Mm. There are other sort of like avenues to leave. Um, there are sort of like, there's the way you came and there's sort of a, a pathway that's roughly to your left and a pathway that's roughly to your right. Yeah, so we could go waterfall, magma rock, temple, this place. Or back. Yeah, or back. Not keen on back. I'm, mm, I'm interested in down. Me too. I'm interested in it. I don't trust it. I don't trust anything we've walked into so far. <laughs> Including Dupree DuPont. Like, it, Sorry? it doesn't feel like going down would be productive. Unless down is an illusion. Have you withdrawn the opinion? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, as you do, there is a skeletal hand that has grabbed onto the end of your... Oh, hell no. Um, your stick. Your, and your harpoon, comes. yes, and it just just sort of doesn't actually have a grip. It just sort of just falls off. I'm going to grab the hand and put it in my jar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you roll me a perception check, please? Can we? Uh, twenty-one. Okay. Uh, the hand is quite small. It is probably a halfling hand. As oh, in, to the point, oh, is this, the size is this, of the other this, bloke who came in. The other bloke. Is this the other bloke? I, I'm I feeling think like he might be dead. Maybe not going down there. I'm glad I was right about that. I'm glad I have now a halfling hand in my jar. I'm feeling really good about Only the Only the not... skeleton. That's better. <laughs> 
It is actually. You have no idea. Much. I had no idea how difficult it was to get the fairy in there in the first place. But the halfling hand, so much luckier. Um. So I'm. Yeah. I'm keen for either this or temple. 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 So we just bypass. So keen for going. Um, I'm. I'm now going to. Have you heard anything from Scottus? I'm not so. Um. Well, look. Apart from a sort of a, a calming feeling that's actually washed over you, there's nothing that you sort of have. I'm on my knees, hands, like, yes, hands on the ground. Sort of kneeling? Okay. Abasing yourself. Abasing. Yes. Okay, well, yeah, no, you feel far more calm than you were because it was a little, it, there was sort of an attention that you weren't aware that was present that sort oh, of disappeared. I was pretty tense. I got attacked by a swarm of fairies. Mm. So did you want to, so did you want to finish your prayer or? We're in no rush. Do I feel like I'm making progress like has it been it feels and yes calmer? it feels like you have sort of this weight that you didn't realize was on you sort of has lifted may i request that we all join him well i mean you wouldn't know this unless he says something but yeah well like he seems to be like just just from observing him he seems to be calmer and it seems to be and nothing else is happening mm. and he's not doesn't seem to, and i don't want to interrupt the guy because he's in praying to the oh look guy. i mean that's what like, could, could could would everybody mind just hopping on the knees for a little minute and yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure he's into religion uh, yes, don't feel you have to I'd no like, nine we would yeah. not want this so so you stay and and look out um, extend your perception and so forth. Roll all the dice, and then the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah, good. I know. Okay. I don't prostrate. I just take a knee. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I feel. I feel that is what I would do as well, actually. So yeah. So a few minutes pass um, as you sort of begin this prayer, and I'm assuming there's sort of a different sort of level of contrition and and what you'd actually say amongst you, but um, you actually feel again this sort of calm approach you, um, and even you do to a degree, Nezor, but not. It's you. It's less. It's like being aware of stress, but you know, not letting it affect you so badly. Mm. Um, How about rush? Um, Rosh seems completely indifferent. <laughs> in fact, rabbit, <laughs> dragon. <laughs> uh, no, Rosh is completely indifferent to the whole situation, quite frankly. Is uh, he still keen for the chicken leg? He does kind of glance at the archway every now and then. Like, he is kind of like, he's like a person who's sort of like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what were you saying? Yeah, sure. Um, Distracted. Yeah, he's just sort of got this sort of mentality. It's, it's Let's take him away from that before he goes. Oh, there's something in there that's interesting. Skeleton The dragon. chicken wing. Well, I mean, you've got a skeleton hand out of it, so. I might, okay, here's the thing. I'm going to just waft the jar with the skeleton hand in front of his nose. Mm -hmm. Just to see what he does. Okay. Um, do he's you like this? Not, what, do, what do you think? He's not particularly interested. Okay, he just sort of so. looks at it like it's like when you show a cat something that it doesn't. It's not interested yeah, in eating. So it's not the fact that there's a corpse of a halfling down that drain that he thinks is interesting. Try it with mm. just a chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can have another chicken. How many out of chicken wings? No, one, one less. <laughs> Half from this. Yeah. Oh, do you mind? Do you mind? What are we on to next? Is it like yes, shaved ham or pork? Yeah, Cured ham. Hey, Rosh, would you like to Yeah, no, wing? he's right into that. He... Okay, so it's really about the food. So it's something of a red herring, Dungeon Master. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, Bypassing Death Temple onto... How are we feeling? Temple? Yeah. What are we, what are we reckoning? Well, have any of you actually stood up or stopped praying? Oh. Well, I've been feeding I, the dragon and offering him dead praying. hands and so forth. But oh, yeah, yeah, them, I, yeah. I don't Stop. think this is getting us anywhere. It's, yeah. it, I, like, I don't think it's a bad thing, what we've just done. I, I actually feel pretty good about the whole business. Um, but I, I think it was thank you for your assistance, Lady of Death. But, um, or just Lady, I think. Lady the, of Bones. Yeah, lady yes. of Bones. Well, thank you, Lady of Bones. It's nice of you to help us here with your calming feelings and so forth. But now I think onwards, maybe not down the stairway of death and halfling hands. Um, but actually to a place that is not death and halfling hands. Good. <laughs> cool. Is that so what everyone wants sure. to do? Yeah, well, if yeah. that's what you're going to do, then I'll... Are you, you're, what, do you have a, a, an alternate proposition? This is... No, no. I'm spitballing uh, here. Pretty much my character will pray until he feels that People the are ready goddess to is happy with you know his offering and then take his leave. Sure. My character's keen to get... <laughs> Far away. Which from that doorway. Will from be that like, doorway. You know, you go, oh, I feel calm, I feel calm. Like, you know, when you get high. It's like, hi, 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 hi. This is as high as I'm going to get. Yep. 
and I don't keep going, okay. that sort of thing. So, so as yeah, soon as you were at that point, <laughs> I would imagine so. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yes. So, so um, we would say, Clarence, are you? Are well, you yeah, good to I would on? start wrapping up. Like I would, you know. Yeah. Thank her Blow again, kisses and, and then, then start putting my arm up. Is there still any kind of point of light at all? That's other than the brazier. Well, actually, actually, since you've completed your prayers, um, the archway is looking a little less dull. Um, but it's sort of like when you stare at something and it gets like it has less definition. But then when you sort of look at it at the corner of your eyes, you can kind of see more shape. It actually appears to be a sort of um, staircase going down. But that's only at the flickering edges of your vision. And we also kind of... I still don't trust it. ...knew that. Yeah, I'm still, still, like still knocking. Built okay. like a trap. Yeah. No, that's fine. I'm getting a fish man in my head. It's a trap. Fair enough. So, oh, you used to do a lot of fishing. On to the... So which direction would you on like to, to go? Temple. West? Let's go in uh, north. north. Towards north. the temple. Um, yeah. So you... Unless so, you're saying that is the entrance to Well, that's the kind of like the book... The book tree cases have sort of kind of... Blo- yeah, what are the trees like now? Are they still, they are still book, tree book, case, okay. book tree cases? They are still book tree cases, yeah. Um, and they are sort of... They are quite clustered close together. You could probably slip past the archway, actually. Okay. Wouldn't but be so much But it seems to be the inference that that's the way in. Mm. But there are... there is killed a, the halfling. There is a path west and there's a path <laughs> east. Bless you. Thank you. What killed the halfling is you probably didn't actually show the respect that's owed. Because the halfling pushed his mate as well, so the halfling was obviously a dick. Yeah. not very. Uh, look, I'm well, actually going to be prepared to actually go through the door. Well, I was going to say, do you want to get your rope, tie a length around you, tie it to someone else, Ooh. not or me, a tree. as or you a look tree. at me, <laughs> tie it or to a tree. someone else. Dwarf. Happy to try it to be a tied tree. Tied to me, I'm the biggest. <clears throat> or I tie it to a tree, which is a good stopping point, and then the rest of you can pull me up, including you, the biggest. Yeah. Right, um, let's do that. And then... <clears throat> I'm up for this. We can see if we can hear um, anything. Someone what holds does Frosh. Frosh, I was going to ask. Who well, does he I like the most? Take Frosh. Yeah, you probably get along. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Frosh. Frosh. Frosh, could you? you just, just here, God, mate. Here yeah. You so you sort of lift wrap, Frosh. Unwrap him around. Yeah. And then and, and, and hand to Ryland. He sort of just looks at Ryland like, again, like a, you would if you picked up a cat and sort of stared at it. It's just like nonplussed sort of appear, like attitude it's towards it. It's only temporary. He likes Calm. chicken wings, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, sort of reaches and out a claw meat. and um, basically tries to purchase on your armour and kind of tries to assume the same position. It's a little bit wobbly because um, you've got, like, mail. And, it's and then I wrap my, a, bit. Uh, a bit of l- rope around my, my waist, mm-hmm. <clears throat> the bony part of my waist, <laughs> not the fleshy, horrible, meaty part of my waist, mm-hmm. and then I give it to... Um, who was good at tying rope? I'm, oh, I'm good at scaling. And that sounds good. I'll yeah, give it to give you, it to and you can tie it around a tree, please. I find quite a big, firm tree, and it goes round. Yep, sure. There's a, there's a, good... a sort of a book tree. May I have far. a brazier? I actually think I'm still holding one, but I, I'm just... Yeah, I believe you were, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, I was holding so the other one. Well, I mean, you guys put it down, sort of yeah, yeah, sparked it in a, the ground while you were yeah. praying. But I, I'm going to go through the door with the braziers. Everyone all, cool with this? Yeah, we're all ready to pull you. Well, yes. some of us I, are ready to pull you back. Is there someone on the lookout? Just, Do we think it's likely that something will happen? I was thinking I should stay praying to see whether there was a reaction from this. Yeah. I, I would prefer your strength to pull me back. I, I yes. <laughs> well, because Lady, the Dragon Lady, Dragon Lady is probably well, definitely strong enough to pull you back by herself. Probably. So she's on pulling back duty, maybe. And yeah, then yeah. We well, could leave you praying. Leave you praying. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, we might do that. Alrighty. So okay. I'll just let you get in your praying position. I was going to say, let's just say I continued praying while you guys were doing this. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So that okay. if if there was like this rise of tension or anything, I yeah. could be like, and I will go, don't do that. I will go through the door very slowly. I will place one leg through. with the li- So you're going through this thing with the lip brazier and a rope around your waist. Yeah. Okay. Brazier. Brazier. So, and uh, what, my one leg goes it's through, and I put the brazier through, my, my arm through, but the most of my body is still through. Sure. It's still not through yet. Okay. Uh, you feel an immediate burning sensation as you place your hand with the brazier through the, um, I guess you'd describe it as a veil, almost. Define burning sensation. Uh, it feels like your hand is being melted by acid. You and take, to pull the hand back. You take one point of damage. What about the foot? So I'm glad we didn't put 
Your, uh, your hand appears to be fine and intact, but it, it's still quite stingy. But uh, point of damage. Point of damage, yeah. Oh, okay. Can you roll me an insight, please? Okay. 25. 25. Okay. You sort of, you notice the, the shape of the Lady of Bones and how she's sort of covering her eyes and that the peace you had was when you were sort of very deep in thought and and not observing your surroundings and being very conscious of her. And once Scan sort of breached the veil, it felt it felt like there was sort of a, it almost like you, someone knocking on a door and distracting you from that. Yeah, I'm going to be like, like, I'll sort of just react to that and go, Come back. let's not. This yeah. isn't a place for the living. Sure. No, I, I, given the state my hand feels in right now, yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing. Is it function? Is your hand functional? It's fine. It's just stingy. What about his leg? It's like putting your hand <clears throat> over a think, hot stove. You know how you get. I that, think like, I only did one limited. Like, like the yeah. way I phrased it, I put my hand in. Uh, I put my foot in first, and you said nothing about. Then yeah. the hand went in. Yeah. So the it was the maybe it was the fire flame then. It might be the flame. It may be flesh. Are you? I am content to try again without the fire. I think put your other hand in. Mm. And then you wave it all about. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to... I think because it's the fire is the brazier is magical. Okay, I'll go back. Give me, say, f- five minutes. Get yourself back to, in. Yeah. So, yeah, five minutes of, of mm-hmm. prayer again. Sure. See how that goes. So, Lady of Bones don't like fire. Maybe. Or magic. Or maybe it's... That is not a place for the living. Mm. So go in there. But the, this is no, my point is my foot went in. Yeah, no his foot went in, no problem. It's the hand with the fire. And the magic brazier. Well, yeah. So, yeah, see how it goes. <clears throat> okay, so um, Clarence sits down again and sort of gets into a sort of a... Approbation. Uh, yeah. And um, resumes prayer. And five minutes pass and you do feel that calm return. Can I actually pray with him for a little while? If you'd like, yeah, absolutely. And get that that calm myself. Yeah, the calm returns. Yeah, and then I go in again, sure, but without the flame. Yeah, sure. And so, again, do you, are you I extinguishing the brazier, or are you no, taking I'm the brazier? Uh, actually, let's put the damn thing out. Are you taking it with you, or are you leaving? It? No, I'm not taking it with me. Okay, so you put it on the ground, put leaving it out. Put it on the ground, put it out. Sure. Can we put the other one out? Yeah, sure. How's the I mean, light we can situation always... generally? Um, it's as dark as it was before. Like the, li- the the light level has dropped a little bit, and interestingly, the other side of this veil has actually gotten a little brighter, and you can actually start to make out the shape of the steps, and um, you can actually see what appears to be the corpse of the aforementioned halfling, and it looks like he's actually reaching out for the doorway. The staircase was leading to. You can see that it's on a sort of an incline. Uh-huh. It also there's sort of. Is something wrong about the other side of it in that the dimensions are odd? Like either it's being distorted or it doesn't seem... There's something off, but it's not necessarily because of what's happening. It's more the dimensions are weird. I'm going to do the same action again, exactly the same. Foot through. No problem. Hand through. No problem. Other hand no problem. Um, be careful when you step through because it might be like an inverted staircase. Like it's like that, but it's exactly like that to trick okay. people. So just be careful. And I'm going to ease my body through, leaving one foot still sure. out. Okay, so you're easing through. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so while you do that, um, the rest of your body that's already gone through starts to feel a slight tingling sensation. But other than that, you're fine. As your head enters, there's a sort of blinding light that strikes your eyes it's too bright uh-huh. and you take three points of damage Ow. and you feel that returning sort of burning agony feel that you had before but now your eyes are the sole recipients of that pain this sucks <laughs> I'm going to yeah pop up and go yep. pull him back yeah um, your eyes are intensely sore like mm-hmm. um, again, it's be like it would be like staring at the sun for a prolonged amount of time. Yeah, it's just yeah. too bright and too sore. However, you're un- physically unaffected. I'm going to offer apologies and say we'll leave. We- we've just been sent in here, but we don't wish to disturb you. Sure. No um, problem. And thank her for her immense guidance yeah. again. And then yeah, I'm going to start armor up, and then I'll. I don't think this is the way. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is a way to something, but something that we don't. I, yeah, I just, it's really hard to pick if this is illusion or... It's 
It's not an illusion, I don't yeah. think. Illusionary it's... magic can't cause harm. Okay. Yeah, I, from what I'm aware would, yeah. of, illusionary magic that's can't... offensive magic. Uh, that is, what I just took was a pain. Yeah. That's not what illusions do. Okay, so I'm assuming you head to either the west or the east. I will do just cure light wounds. Okay, um, sure. Do you, which oh, gives you a D8, I believe. Uh, I believe that's correct. Um, 1D8 plus... Yep. Yeah, three plus two and spell level, which is one. So, so you get six. Lost four. Yeah. That's fine. So, so you're, you're healing back basically back full health. Yeah. No worries. Thanks very much for that. All right. So waterfall or Bernie Rock? Or past it, going through the trees that. Yeah, you can still make your way forward. It's not like a delineated path. It's sort of just mm. like pressing, sort of cavernous. Yep. Um. Yeah. We'll head towards our temple. Sure. I reckon temple. Temple. Okay. Right. What do we think, Ryan? Yeah. Temple. temple. Cool. So you travel for about, you sort of, I assume your head, again, pick directions. Have we lit the no. braziers again? Um, I'd say so, yes, because yeah. I feel like the danger's passed now and I'd rather yeah. sight. Okay. Press. 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 Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> they're lit up again. I'll hold one. Arabella's holding the other. the other. Well, are you still holding your chicken Arabella? for your friend? No, no, I placed that. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm, I've am i put my chest piece and all that on. I'm yep. just finishing You've my gloves your and all that as we're heading. Sorry, don't. Don't. Shall I through? Yeah, all right, so you make your way past the um, the strange archway and leave it and the strange supplicant statue of the Lady of Bones behind. And uh, you make your way through the ever-darkening forest. A good five, ten minutes in, you actually start... Tr- actually, everyone roll me a, um, a dexterity check, thanks. Five. Sixteen. Twenty-one. Five. Sixteen. Okay, uh, Scan and Ryland actually trip over a book and land on their faces. Um, there are actually books oh. strewn on the strewn on the ground at this point, and you're sort of. Rosh is pretty hecked off about this. Yeah, no, he sort of went skittering. I'll forward. coax him back onto me <laughs> now. Why would you drop my dragon? He would have just flown off. Yeah, just... he probably would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, he sort of did that thing where they jumped. You come here, come. So can we survey the general areas? How far have we travelled? Um, you've travelled probably a good, uh, you know, 200, 300 metres. Like it's it was only 600 feet away. Yeah, so I feel like we're mm. almost there. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was also your impression of the distance. It not, doesn't necessarily represent yeah. the space. But and yeah. the illusion as well. But yeah, no, you're, you're sort of coming into this area now. And ac- actually, the, the branches are seeming to sort of break a little bit and sort of become a bit more light. But um, you're, yeah, you're coming across books that are strewn upon the ground. Um, and the the shelves look a bit more disheveled and out of order as uh, as opposed to what they were before. And you find before you three forks uh, in directions and these... Los <laughs> <laughs> Angeles faces is like, fork. why would there be forks on the ground? Forks! That makes no it's sense. A <laughs> There's a hungry man about because he like, hasn't what? got utensils yeah, to eat his chicken, chicken wings. wings. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there are three. There are three directions in which you can travel, and Thank the uh, book trees are actually more like bookshelves with sort of ornate tree elements to them now. Ah, sort of be thinning like out. I'm still forest. feeling straight ahead. Yeah. Can I have a perception check? Yeah, sure. Um, what are you looking for? Uh, d- to see uh, footprints. Um, yes, actually, it's quite dusty here as opposed to before. And I'm checking out the ground generally, really. Yeah, you can That's see... That's 17, by the way. That's yeah, you can see, actually, there are some sort of footprints that are actually here, and they appear to be... Uh, Male size 12? Well, uh, they definitely appear to be boots. Uh-huh. Possibly... Big or small? This is important. Actually, somewhat, somewhat on the smaller side, but probably male. And... Like we're not talking gnome or halfling size. No, like humanoid size, uh-huh. like easily a, a, a size uh, that you would have. Equate to maybe, say, an arch. Wait, where were the Possibly, yeah. footsteps are going again? Sorry, they're going straight uh, They ahead. are heading straight ahead. You've okay. gone, you've chosen to go forward and you've kind of encountered So things. I'm liking straight ahead. Yeah, me too. Yes. I think yep. this is a good uh, idea. Can I, I'm, I might also straight have another, tra- another perception test for traps. Sure, go ahead. 
that would be 18. Yeah, um, there doesn't appear to be any traps. There just appears to be more and more strewn books, and it looks like someone's sort of been frantically What's reading them and the kind of... And, yeah. Well, like, they're, they're all on angles and sort of either Another half floor. out um, or on the floor. Are the books still Can the I same pick up, as before? Yeah, I'm going to pick up a book, a few books and... Yeah. Don't uh, write your name in anymore. No, I'll, I'll pick up one and have a look and flick through. Um, it is uh, Albumum's Guide to Alchemical Formulae, and it has rather a lot of detail in how to transmit mute certain properties and other properties and actually seems like a quite a lot of gobbledygook because it's all in sort of a, uh, a formulaic fashion but it is quite legible what are the uh, are they the various books and various and they all have titles yes they've all got sort of different information in them but most of them seem to be something to do with either magical theory or history are or... there any on the ground that look particularly interesting not really. They all have sort of this weird beige kind of covered colour. Uh, so they're all colour. round about the same colour? Round about. I mean, it, does, it just appears to be like this is actually more like. So there isn't any that stands out? No, not at all. How extensively trashed is this? Uh, basically the whole way forward, which kind of ends in a T-junction and there's a left turn. I mean, as in tidying up. I'd probably been you know, destroyed, like, like sort of someone picking stuff up it, and putting it doesn't. It, back. Look, it looks like someone's been frantically looking through the books, but nothing beyond. Not that. trying to destroy the place. No, actually looking. Just looking for something, and then sort of went, "Oh, this doesn't work. Throw it on the ground." Or which this one, this one, this one. No, that one. No, 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 no. Triggers no. my dwarvish OCD. <laughs> okay, like that's what Must I meant. Must and replace. Is yeah. is it going to be too time consuming to start putting some stuff? No, back you can on the absolutely shelves? do that if you want, but the um, others will probably be moving on. Well, that's yeah. what I meant. Is yeah. if while they're investigating, can I'll start I, putting stuff away. Can I roll one for perception to see if any of the books look particularly relevant to our current sure. circumstance? Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen? Um, no, they're just they're all odd named books, and a lot of them are to do, like I said, to do with magical theory, which doesn't really make sense either. And if they're not to do with magical theory, they're like really obscure texts, like you know the history of Moss and Lichen from the Unholy Empires outward. Also, reaches. quite odd that a sorcerer would be in possession of so many books. Well, he was a bibliophile. <clears throat> So. He's a bibliophile. Oh, he collects. Yes. Yeah. This is exactly what he would have. Yes, but uh, um, yeah, I guess. Mm. Um, and it's pretty much exactly the way. What I'm curious about is to why he's looking, because mm. I'm feeling like it's him that's looking, that's having this frantic search through his collection. Although a bibliophile would have them very neatly, he would know where every book was. Mm. So maybe it's not him. Unless it's whatever it is that's causing stress. Yeah. You know, it might pushing beyond yeah um, but, uh, but still so we haven't seen anything that's to worry us we carry on going yeah, yeah I think I carry just on going so you around the corner, the corner. Um, maybe I would like to have a bit of a look around the corner so okay I'm so um, maybe roll for perception Abella runs ahead yeah, yeah sure starting it around oh that's good seven seven um, well, you're around the corner and you poke your head out and there appears to be a man dressed in black just pulling the book out of a shelf and trying to read it. I very, like, I just... Very just, quietly. Just <laughs> edge back around the corner very quietly. Well, as you do so, uh, he perks up and looks across and goes, no, 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 don't move. I don't move. You hear none of this, by the way, everyone else. Having him actually face you now, you notice that he has two little pointed horns that are coming out from his forehead oh, and a small um, small black tail that's kind of coming out from his breeches. Oh, so he's like a... He's very well dressed. I don't know how you got in here, but don't move. Thank you for listening to this episode of There Be Dragons. If you'd like to know more about the show, feel free to check us out at therebedragonscast.com for lore, cast information, and updates on our schedule. You can also find us at therebedragons.podbean.com and on Spotify for your listening needs. If Twitter is more your thing, you can also find us at TV Dragonscast. I am Matthew, your Dungeon Master, and Scan felspath Thufferson is played by Joshua Walker. Ryland Westfall is played by Karen Schlink. Clarence Longbottom is played by Tristan Doust. Abella de Rosier is played by Angela Donlan. And finally, Nezel Valgoulis is played by Tom Moore, who also acts as our sound recordist. There Be Dragon's original theme and scores are composed by award-winning composer Sean Tanian. You can see more of his work at seantanianmusic.com. Thanks for listening, everyone.
See you next time.